Turn your stream off, whoever is watching it. Welcome to Gamer's Edge Podcast. Come on in, sit down, relax, have yourself a purple mason jar filled with half Chick-fil-A lemonade and half limeade, because you only live once. My name is Mark, I'm one of your hosts, it's a look at the video gaming industry, a look at what it means to be a hardcore gamer, and a conversation amongst friends. Joining me this week from far left to far right, starting all the way from New Jersey himself, it's Dave! Oh, it just sounds dirty you saying that. I know, that's why I said it. Ugh. Well, think about it this way. You're New Jersey stuffed with Philly. So, <laughs> it's... Yeah, that sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> and next to him, joining us from the other Great White North, the real one, it's Kate. So, is Philly stuffed New Jersey like a Philly cheesesteak wrapped in bog water? Right, it's New Jersey stuffed Philly. Yeah, it's a New Jersey stuffed Philly. Right, is or no, it's a Philly. No. It, it's a Philly New stuffed Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah, you're right. It's like yeah. seaweed wrap, except actual sea, like just dirty seaweed. <laughs> Sorry, New Jersey. It's, no, it's Jersey yeah. is the kick bitch of the nation. I mean, I think everybody, uh, I think everybody is uh, pretty comfortable with that by now. I don't know, Alabama. Kind of might have an argument for that too. No, no, they really don't. Jersey is the <laughs> butt of pretty much all the jokes. Family's <laughs> got football, so you know. Florida too. Season. Yeah, Jer- Jersey should have football teams because, like, all the New York teams play in Jersey. <laughs> They're just like, <laughs> we're just going to use your, we're just going to use your land, but you're not actually allowed to have the teams. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. <sighs> Oh, Atticus and, and Bacon Guy are both uh, arguing over who came first. Bacon Guy go, shouted first in the chat, yet Atticus Al was the first one to actually say anything. So, sorry, Bacon Guy, I think Atticus beat you. Um, next to him, from the other great white north of Wisconsin, it's Matt! Howdy. It's actually do, not white here for the first time in forever. You know, when I say that... do not here at all, either. Do you feel like pork when I say that? <laughs> no, the no, other white no. meat? I was just checking. Um, I'm actually looking... The other white meat in Wisconsin is cheese. <laughs> See, I'm... <laughs> white and yellow and... Yes. I'm actually looking for... I, I just removed the Twitch chat from the screen because... Oh, there it is. Um, it was not showing up. And so I was quickly trying to re-add it because they just updated it so that it would uh yeah you may say bacon guy that you were first but on my screen it was atticus sorry man uh let's see channel name connect facts first. <laughs> yeah, oh no no we are not going to introduce alternative gaming facts or twitch facts into this <laughs> twitch spiracy yeah no 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 all right so that's twitch gate running yeah, oh god, please no. Um so we have a ton of stuff to talk about. Of course, since the last time you saw us, a little thing called the Nintendo Switch has launched into the wild. So we're gonna discuss that. We're also going to discuss oh, no, Ghost you snap your fingers. Well, yeah, you did <laughs> I don't want a copyright takedown. Did that's a that's a news story that I didn't cover, but somebody actually got copyright banned. From uh, because they were using the switch sound on their YouTube channel. Oh my so, gosh! A finger snap is it, now a switch sound. Oh, well, the actual switch sound. So yes. Oh. Wait. Um, so just down to the sound. Yes, like they got taken down. Second. By, which means play. Nintendo is the one that's instigating that. So I'm just saying, uh, gotta love it. Anyways, uh, we're gonna talk about the switch in detail. Uh, we're gonna talk. We're gonna look at it. We're gonna talk about. Um, first 48 hours with it. We're going to talk about tasting the cartridges. And then we're also going to move on and talk about Tom Con- Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon, Recon colon Wildlands. The longest freaking name for a game that's ever been released, I think. 
Um, and you we're got through it sort of on your first try. So Almost, yeah. yeah. Almost. Um, you, and you, then you hammered through. It's good. We we're also going to talk about uh, MMOs offering players yep. to skip the actual thing that you sign on to an MMO for the game itself. So we're going to talk about that a little bit as well. Um, but first, let's go around the room and talk about what we've been playing, like we do every single week. And let's start with Kate. Uh, I haven't really been playing much. I've been playing a lot of Dead or Alive Extreme 3, just because I was in the mood to just mute. And what are you doing? I, I was trying to get your attention without necessarily signaling. Your camera is so low that your face isn't clearing the four. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Sure? Yeah, okay. much better, much I'm better. I'm playing a lot of Dead or Alive Extreme 3 because I just wanted to put the TV on mute, listen to music, and just, like, kind of zone out and play. And that tickles that itch for me, where I can just kind of zone out and just play volleyball and grind for stuff. So I did that, like, all week. Well, that's not a bad way to spend a week. Are you playing any mobile anymore, or have you given them all up now? No, I've given them all up. Nice. Like, the only one I haven't deleted... How many weeks have you been clean? Oh, oh, actually, like, months. The only one I haven't deleted off my phone, and I almost have deleted it, is, um, the Sailor Moon drops, which is, like, the, uh, Bejeweled, but Sailor Moon. It's the only one that's still even on my phone, and I haven't even touched it in forever. I probably will delete it. And I should mention, before we move on, that I was horrible and did not uh, say the rest of my spiel at the beginning. If you'd like to contact us, you can do so by either... Nope, oh, this time it's actually over here. In the Twitch chat, over on this side, uh, you can type there. Uh, you can hit uh, bit.ly slash gldiscord, which is right down here, and it magically appears on the screen. Or you can comment in the live stream uh, on the YouTube channel or on Facebook Live. Notes tied around their necks. Oh, like memes? Meme delivery? No, cats with notes. Not pictures of like, cats, like, actual cats. Actual cats. Like like owls. Yeah. She, instead of owls from Harry Potter, she has cats. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's like snail mail, except that it's cat snail mail. Cat mail. Yeah, cat mail. Okay. Oh, I will nice. This could get bad really fast. I'm gonna stop. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Matt. Yeah. What have you been up to for the last week? I don't know. Stuff. Do you, um, did you kill another tree? No, it's the same tree. See, this side, it's all covered with scribbles all over it. It's the same tree. Um, huh. Or same, you know, I don't know, branch. Um, uh, finished the main story. Uh, got through that. Did you say, got, wait, wait, wait. Did you say yeah. Final Fantasy 15? Yeah. I did. Okay, it's just on my end. You just froze up. Oh, and okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was on everybody's end. <laughs> no, it did. Yeah, no, no, not 17 this time. It was 15. Um, so I finished the story, uh, got through that. Um, I enjoyed it. I, I didn't even think Chapter 13 was that bad, really. I didn't either. Like, I mean, it was different than the other chapters, but not... Kind of like the same. I had the same sort of feeling as when I played the end of Mass Effect 3 because I had played it later than when all like the hubble blue was going on with it. Mm -hmm. I felt the exact same way where it's like, this isn't as bad as everyone said it was going to be. Yeah, I, there, there's a couple of mechanics in there that are frustrating because they're kind of not necessary. <laughs> yeah. But um, the overall, it wasn't that bad. I, I have a chapter 12 save, so whenever the patch hits, I can fire up 12, gun through that, and get into 13 just to see what the differences are. Um, but uh, overall, I thought it was good. Um, the thing that changes after you beat it was very unique. I wasn't expecting something like that, so that was a, that was a cute touch. Yeah, I know um, exactly what you're talking about. Uh... And, uh, yeah, I thought it, you know, yeah, it's not, it's not the best story ever told, but it's by no means a bad story. Uh, the game overall does suffer. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. oh, I was gonna say, I don't think it's a bad story. It's that it's like truncated. Yeah. I mean, the, the back half of the game is basically, I think I had mentioned this before, but it's basically the second disc of Xenogears. It, it just 
Didn't we talk about this last week? It may have, yeah. yeah. Okay. Did I beat it last week? Story? Yeah, you beat it last week and you called it Final Fantasy 17 and we were making fun of you. Well, I know I called it Final Fantasy 17. No, we didn't beat it last week. I hadn't beaten it yet. I swear you had. I find, I, I liken the story in 15 almost to 12's story in that I wish there was more. And yeah. you can see the development problems in the storytelling. Like you can Yeah, that, that's the biggest that thing. Cut out. Yeah, the, the, the 10 year development cycle or at least 10 year development cycle, you can tell obviously the story had different ways it was going to go at different times and mm -hmm. it never got all the pieces put together quite completely. Um, cause this game could have been really long if they would have gone down all the paths. Like, and had more expanded stories. Fully. Yeah. Yeah. Like if they treated the story the way seven, eight, nine, and 10 treated story. Oh, this would have been a hundred yeah, hours been. just to complete. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, now I'm, uh, once I got done, I only had six trophies left to the platinum. I'm now down to four trophies left to the platinum. So. Um, that'll be a thing that's happening. Bam 4. Uh, actually, my daughter is the one who kept us... Oh, Rock Band 4? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Oh. You hitched again oh. while you were talking. Rock Band 4. Hmm. Um, so, oh, yeah, waiting for the next uh, thing to cycle through. Um, though this Thursday to Tuesday, I, I mean, I understand why they did Thursday to Tuesday is their week, but it's kind of a hard time for me to get in as much as I'd like to. Um, and fire up all three of the PlayStation 4 Plus games for this month, uh, Disc Jam, Tearaway, and Lumo. Jam and My Fingers don't get along. I don't know if it's just unrefinement in the game or can't figure out the timings and make my fingers do them i'm not sure which tear away uh, yeah it's a medium all cool game it looks like the entire game was made out of construction paper and uh it's it's pretty pretty cute um are into it but i don't know how much further i'll ever get into it it's 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 interesting and compelling but it's not like this for hours compelling so and then lumo uh, i spent way more time in that than i thought i would that's in some ways almost a little too old school <laughs> like the map doesn't show you what room you're in <laughs> old school <laughs> and uh yeah no you have to memorize your path as you go yeah yeah that gets a little frustrating because the rooms aren't that unique um but it's got really good sound, really good music. Uh, it's got a good aesthetic to it, so um, that was fine. And then Friday we played Truffle 2 until, you know, Atticus and uh, Bacon Guy can can attest to the, the things that fell apart there with that. <laughs> and uh, and then I switched over to Not a Hero for a while. Game, but just not really my thing. Uh and then Legion, then watching Legion and the Expanse, which are both just filling the amazing portions of TV in completely different ways. I, I have to say that um, I beg to differ with Dave's opinion on Legion Episode 3. It was not all that in a bag of chips. The first one was still way better. It was okay. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Episode 4. Exactly. But, I don't know. I really like the uh, I like the creep factor of it. I was I was creeped out by it. I, I just I, I don't know I'm the worst so person cute. for that stuff though. I don't that stuff never affects me, and so it I you I didn't have to get be that affected at all. by it to appreciate it though. I mean I wasn't like sitting there quivering in my chair, but I could appreciate the creep factor that was going on there, and the continuing evolution of you just have no idea what's real and what is. This entire oh. show could be a hallucination. I mean that could be the reveal, you know. Yeah, but I don't I don't think they're going that path. I think you you're fairly grounded watch in reality at this four, point. Okay, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Um so I'm actually going to go next and we'll we'll finish with Dave cuz we have longer things to talk about with Dave. But um 
Ghost Recon's Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon colon Wildlands uh, launched this week. And we were originally going to stream on Monday night when I got the game. But we didn't get it until 9.30 Central. I'm on 9.30 Pacific, excuse me. And then by the time I down, I it put the disc in going, I'm going to get this installed and no problem. And it did an install for like seven and a half minutes. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty light install. But there was a two and a half gig day one patch that took 20 minutes to download. So by then it's now 10 o'clock. And then it was, once I applied the patch and opened the game, there was a 27 minute install after the seven minute install from the hut. And so by the time everything was said and done, it was already like basically close to 11 o'clock. And I had been up at a conference since uh, 6 a.m. that morning and I just did not make it. I'm like, I'm, I can't do this, we'll do it again tomorrow. And so last night we streamed uh, the game and if you're not familiar with Ghost Recon, uh, the idea is that you are put into a scenario, in this case it's you are attempting to disrupt the cocaine trade in Bolivia. The game swears like a sailor, so Kate love, would love it. Um, but more importantly, uh, the gameplay is, it, you, can, you can play by yourself, you do not have to play with anyone else, so you can play it as a single player game. And it gives you three AI bots that are pretty smart, actually, uh, that you can give commands to and go do your thing. But you can also play the game online co-op, and uh, amazingly, uh, it worked day one out of the gate. Like, it actually, the game was up and running for an Ubisoft launch, stable, uh, on launch day, which is, is a little bit unusual. I don't believe you. Yeah, no, I know, right? <laughs> well, so this is the funny part. Last night on the stream, which is technically the the true launch day you know monday night you can whatever but tuesday it was and uh if you watch the stream i'm getting kicked out of the playstation uh voice chat every like five and a half seconds we, we played for an hour and it was fine and then suddenly i had like a 40 minute spurt where i was just constantly going back into the party getting kicked going back in etc etc so eventually we just switched to the in-game chat no problem no issues my wife uh watches netflix all day she's watching gilmore girls where she, while she worked no problems i get home i touch the controller banned from the playstation network again so i love this problem sony glad you ban ip addresses for no reason with no information why so until my ip cycles out i am once again Banned from PlayStation Network. Hooray! For who knows why. Um, Reasons. I did just check. I can get to it on my phone. Which makes no sense. But I can't... Yeah, anyways. Anyhow. Did you, um, did you see... I don't know if you had this in news or not, but did you see that the government of Bolivia is threatening to take legal action against the portrayal of its country in this game? <laughs> no. Um, no. Mark, is your phone on Wi-Fi, or is it... You know, actually, I just realized it is on LTE, that's why. I was just trying to say, because that didn't make Yeah, sense. if it was on Wi-Fi... Yeah, I, I was, was going to be nice and not call him out on that, but... Yeah, no. Well, no. No, no, because I turned it off Wi-Fi while I was testing, so yeah, no, it was, it it was a valid question. It's just like, you know, throwing it out there, saying, like, you know, hey, that, that actually makes sense. So, uh, ju I just want to talk a little bit about Ghost Recon um, before we move on. I wanted to not want to play this game. I have Horizon Zero Dawn on my plate. I've been playing the hell out of that. I'm up to 15 hours in. I Most of the map is still hidden for me. That game is so much ridiculous fun uh, that I did not want another game coming out that I needed to stop and go review and go check out. Um, but Ghost Recon Wildlands is stupidly fun with your friends. Uh, whether it's people being malicious and crashing their helicopter into yours and watching the ensuing carnage as you all plummet towards your death from 10,000 feet up or whether it's um, well, what happened last night oh we there are some missions that are kind of like wave-based attacks 
where you have to protect a generator and not let the bad guys shoot it. And we're all using mines so that when the bad guys come and and as you walk past a mine, it will not go off. But if bad guy walks past it, it will go off. If a NPC, like a, just a, a, a civilian, walks past it, it will not go off. But if anybody drives over it, it will go off. So anyways, we finished the wave base mission and I forgot and I got everybody in the truck and we drove over a mine and it was just watching the bodies fly everywhere. And everybody is like, what just happened? Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, it's actually ridiculously fun and you don't have a ton of tactical strategy that you can do, but it is kind of cool to move in as a stealthy unit of four people and take down an entire compound with no one ever seeing you or but that's never the way it goes right it's like you'll take out the first six people and then somebody invariably either misses and alerts everybody or that one person runs in like Leroy Jenkins and you got to keep him alive I mean it, it's actually kind of fun no matter what you do so it, it, it's been a lot of uh, uh, so far it has lived up to the amusement I thought I would get out of it. Granted, I'm only a few hours in, but half the fun is, let's go explore over here. Oh, we need an upgrade for this gun. Let's go find it. You know, so that's that's kind of fun. And uh, it, it's been, yes, Leroy indeed. Um, but that's been so a lot of fun. Yeah, go ahead. Most of you said helicopter. How is the helicopter flight control? So they're a little wonky, but I somehow am like a rock star pilot in this game. It's not... It's, um... Well, you use L2 and R2 to go up and down. And then you push forward, but the nose does not dive like in every other game unless you are pushing on the throttle. So you push forward and it'll like lean forward like tiny little bit. But you have to like then either throttle or kill the engine in order to get the nose drop so that you go forward. And both are viable options. It just depends what you're trying to do. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I've actually somehow adapted to it really well. And I can like land those things on a dime. So I'm the, I'm the chopper guy of our group. Um, and, and I will say that the vehicle handling, like just driving a normal vehicle, you're an elite team of commandos who can do anything except drive in a straight line. So that is that is one of the... Uh, uh, and then the other thing that we did notice in the game was uh, one of our guys got into a boat. I climbed onto the boat with him, but if I did not run in place, I would be shot off the back of the boat as he gave it throttle. So I he had he has to control the amount of throttle that he's giving and I'm like I'm like sprinting in place in the boat so that we can cross this freaking lake. It's it's ridiculously it's exactly looking how so. Boats work. It's exactly. I mean <laughs> they're hamster wheels. It, it is exactly it. It's pretty hilarious. I, I guess I guess we know the physics engine technically works. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like uh, so it, I mean it is not a perfect game. There are some bugs, but what they're accomplishing for an online multiplayer game uh, of this type, it's really, it, it's it's Just Cause meets Grand Theft Auto meets The Division, is Hold what on, this just, game I really just, is. I'd love to see the meeting. It's just like, all right, did you test out the boats? Yeah, I tested out the boats. Did you, did you put like three people on the boat? Oh, come on, that's never going to happen in game. We don't have time for this. Well, the funny part is, it's a boat. It's like a speed boat, right? And so the, the driver's up in the front, and then it's got two lounging seats in the back, but no one can actually sit in those seats. <laughs> and so there's, like, no prompt or anything to climb in or get on. I just, he positioned the boat in a way that I was able to get into the boat because there's no jump button in the game. And so if you can't, um, <laughs> you will get Zelda, the prompt. That's because Zelda took it. Well, yeah. You will get the prompt to vault over things or climb things, but there's no actual j jump button. And so um, I managed to get in the boat, but there was no way to sit down, and that's that was a real... So, yeah, they've got some, they've got some patching to do still, 
But uh, like I said, you know, for for the mix of what it is, it's a heck of a lot of fun. Um, it's like they took the Just Cause multiplayer and then made an entire game out of it, which turns out to be actually really freaking fun. So uh, we we've been uh, I, I've been doing that over the last couple of days. It's it's been a, a lot of fun. Um, I've also so totally been different type of, so totally different type of game, but for getting together and just having some multiplayer fun that or overwatch oh that's apples and oranges i mean well like i said they're totally different kinds of games i i think the more fair comparison would be the division because the division is close enough that i would still put it in the same category of well if i have the division do i need wildlands and the answer is, I don't know, are you tired of the division? If that's the case, then go, you know, chat and BS and kill things in Wildlands. Um, Overwatch is, I still think, a better overall game because it's so craftingly and lovingly balanced and made. But you're not going to be... It is not the time sink type game. Overwatch is like, you have to focus on what you're doing at all points in time, whereas there's some stretches of downtime in Wildlands where you're all getting into a helicopter and flying, you know, 16 kilometers uh, down to go take out a cartel, you know, outpost or something like that. You don't have to be on point or focused as much all the time. I mean, once you get to the outpost, yeah, you're going to want to figure out a, a, a strategy and go in there and, and clean it up and call out to each other where people are or, or what they're looking for, etc. But Overwatch, there's no downtime at all. You're Unless you're waiting for a match. But that's a different kind of downtime because you can't do anything together in that time, really. So I, I would say Overwatch is still like... <clears throat> Overwatch is like the pinnacle of, of gaming in terms of let's make a high quality game but if you're looking for a game to just goof off with your friends laugh a lot and bs and 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 occasionally be serious about the game that's what i would classify wildlands for does that answer are, are your question four, yeah yeah it kind of does the, i guess the other the other part of it, i'm curious like in overwatch you have a role in this one are you basically all for the same character for all intents and purposes or do you have, is there some variability classing to the characters? Great question. So um, there are actually, so the short answer is in late game, you will all be the same character. In early games, you can, in the early part of the game, you can have some pretty wildly different people. Um, there are five skill trees, if I remember correctly, and you can choose to spend your points in them however you want. So some people will have better um, drones that, that can last longer and go farther, while other people will have parachutes so they can do rec reconnaissance, and other people will have, um, they'll be like bullet sponges, so they soak up more damage, etc. Is there that much difference in early game? No, probably not. Um, but then as time, I, I think really to answer your question, in the middle of the game, that's where you're going to see the most variance. But then late game, everybody's going to have enough points to have all the skill trees filled out. So, but yeah, in in, what's that? I was gonna say I think it's kind of hard to compare Overwatch to out to a Ghost Recon because Overwatch is a shooter and Ghost Recon is an open world game. Yeah, and the one thing I will say that I was surprised about is that Wildlands is actually difficult. It's um, more difficult than I was anticipating it to be. It is... Than the division? So, this is actually where the Division and Wildlands take a, a, a left turn from each other. Because uh, the Division is an RPG, so if you shoot somebody in the head, you're, it's, you know, the numbers tick off, and you're going to have to shoot them in the head 17 times in order to kill them. Whereas this is more realistic in that if you shoot somebody in the head they're dead it doesn't matter if they're a normal per a, a normal mob an elite mob it doesn't matter because they do have varying things but 
if you shoot them in the head, generally they're dead in one shot, unless they're wearing a helmet, and that's very rare in the game. Um, so they're kind of different along those lines, but because of that, they shoot harder as well. You take far less damage to get you killed. Uh, so in that sense, it's it's harder than the division in that you you can't really be a bullet sponge either. Uh, so you have to be careful if you're going into a high security area that has alarms and has 50 people and it's just two of you playing co-op, there's a pretty good chance that one or both of you is going to die in, multiple times in the process of clearing out that base. Uh, and if you both die at the same time, the game resets back to the last uh, checkpoint. So it's a little bit harder in that respect, but it is it is a little bit different animal than, than the Division. Um, I would say it is actually harder than the Division because of that setup. The vehicles are probably the worst part of the game so far, but other than that, um, the game is actually pretty. I'm not going to say like it's it's Horizon Zero Dawn because that's some kind of voodoo. I don't know what they what what kind of uh, tarot magic they put into getting those visuals on the standard PS4. But uh, it is a pretty game. You know, you watch the sunrise and and you'll see reflections off metal surfaces of the pinks and stuff. That PS4 it's really good. That graphics all of a sudden. That's we should. That's expected. No, no, no. Horizon Zero Horizon Dawn. It's like extra gorgeous. Yeah, I don't know what they did to it, but it's like, I think some of the best graphics we've ever seen. Yeah, that's what happens when you just make the game for one system. You get to optimize. <laughs> I agree. It... <laughs> I agree, but I'm saying uh, Wildlands is not that, but it is pretty at times. Um, and the draw distance is good. I haven't seen a whole lot of pop up, um, but uh, yeah, it, I, I'm I'm enjoying it. Um, it's still early on, so I, I don't have any kind of score that I'm kicking around in my head. I've kind of got a general direction of where I think it's going to go, but I want to actually play through the story. This is another one of those stupid games, especially because you can play with your friends. I still have only done the first story. I've probably logged six hours into the game, and I've still only done the first mission. Because we were like, oh, you know what? Uh, in order to better do those story missions, let's go find the better scope for our sniper rifle. And that led us to a series of emergent gameplay events that were kind of ridiculous to go do that. So it's going to be easy, easily side-trackable. Um, just what I need, another game with thousands of side quests. It just needs mm -hmm. like some sort of card game and you'll never stop playing it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you give them ideas? Went. No. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, I'm glad you brought that up because that before we get to Dave, there's one other announcement that I have to make. We have a PC Gwent beta code to give away. So if you would like to win a PC Gwent beta code, all you have to do is go to, your, to our Facebook page at gamersledge.com slash Facebook and tell us your favorite funniest gaming moment. And you'll automatically be entered to win. We will give it away on next week's podcast, a PC Gwent beta code. Did you mean Facebook.com slash Gamers Ledge? Facebook.com slash Gamers Ledge. Yes. I <laughs> probably Chris said Gamers Ledge.com yeah. slash Facebook, didn't I? Mm. <laughs> yes. Yes. Did. Go to Facebook.com slash Gamers Ledge. Oh, and, uh, and yes. Internet. So, internets. I, I know how the tubes work. I promise. Uh, so, that then. Oh, I've been playing Clash Royale like a madman. Um, that, Still, that game, wow. uh, that game has got its hooks into me deep. Um, and, uh, what else did I play? I, oh, Star Trek Online, obviously. Uh, except for today. No dailies for me today since I'm banned from the PSN. And, uh, I guess today, I don't know if they were released today, I just noticed them today. The store is full of Star Trek avatars on sale. Oh no, that they've been there for a while. In fact, I've got the uh, 
I have the whole pack. I bought it the first time they were on sale. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, so I've I just noticed it today. Yeah, I got I got the whole set of them. Um, they are fantastic avatars, so I'm super excited. I've got the Locutus of Borg, and I keep switching between that one and the actual Borg. Except that you use your Facebook avatar, so that's the one I see. I don't see your Star Trek ones. Oh, that's right. I'll have to change that. Yeah. Um, so, that then brings us to the launch that happened this last Friday. Uh, Nintendo launched a little system called the Switch. And Dave, I know you picked it up. I did. Now you need me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually proud of you. How's that? I almost you actually consider you a gamer for this last week. Dude, I actually... <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I feel like a gamer again. That was some crazy <laughs> stuff. He's a born again gamer. I am <laughs> like two no. weeks in a row. It's no, like, here's here's the thing. The cutting edge. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you've been gaming for over thirty five years now, or not, as the case may you, be, you hit ebbs and you hit ebbs and flows. Like there's times where you just kind of go on a like you know just nothing's grabbing me you know, and I can remember those points in time. And then you play a game that just brings you out of that funk, you know? And you just go like, this is why I play games. And that happened again. Um, you know, I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn, and I thought that was a great game, and I was just like really into it. I was like, oh, this is great, this is cool. You know, and around 11 o'clock hit, and I was just like, okay, I'm tired, I'm gonna go to bed now. But I got Zelda on the Switch. And it's like, okay, it's 1.30, I'm a little tired now, and it's 3 o'clock, and I really need to go to bed. <laughs> um, and that happened, you know, during the weekend and maybe a couple school nights this week. So, yeah, we're tired. So so let's, let's separate that for a minute. Um, which yeah. do you want to talk about first? Do you want to talk about Zelda, or do you want to talk about the Switch? We'll just talk about the Switch first. We'll go there. All right. So first... Let's see the the item in question. So so here it is. Ooh, Here's you the got the uh, OCD killer version. The, of course. <laughs> hey, you know something added benefit. I was at the. They pushed me to the front of the line because of that. Because apparently everybody wanted the gray ones. Yeah, because I was like, I can't play with two separate colors. So, so people are just like, people are like, ew. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't want that. It's ugly and it's not cool. <laughs> And then they were like, anybody that ordered like the multicolor one, you get to get to come to the front of the line because we only have a few of those, and you know that's just the way the order worked out. And everybody's like, boo! And I just turned to the guy and was like, yeah, it helps to have no shame. Eh? <laughs> so, um, so I, I do have to ask a question. Yeah. Are you experiencing the left uh, Joy-Con problem? Uh, no, I actually have no idea what the left Joy-Con problem is, but I think there's a specific reason for that. Are you, um, play, are you playing it as a handheld, though? Yes. Yeah, Yeah, that's why. He only connects it, yeah. Yes. Right. <clears throat> I'm playing it as a handheld, and I did actually pick up the Pro controller. Um, so I can speak about that as well. Um, so when it's hooked up to the TV, I'm literally just dropping the whole thing, you know, Joy-Cons and all, just in the dock, and then... You know, starting up the pro controller uh, to play, and yeah, I've had no issues with that. I did remove them to play uh, one two switch um, over the weekend. I tested that out with uh, my fiance's cousin or nephew, sorry, and that was actually a lot of fun. And that was like separating out the Joy Cons, and you know, one person had one, one person had the other. Um, I is it like a distance thing to people? Like, is they're sitting like far away from their TVs or no, something? Um... Some people have it disconnecting even just by putting their hand in front of, like, where the connection is. It's oh, just weird. some of them are just super sensitive. Huh. Um, but, yeah. But it's no, almost I... always the left one for some reason. Yeah, it's always the left one. Well, no, I did, I did read a thing about that. They are actually different internally. Um, and someone actually, apparently, the, like, the left one has a slightly weaker antenna or something than the other one. And somebody actually did, like, a solder hack to it where they kind of like extended out and gave a little more metal inside 
and apparently fixed all their issues. So There's apparently, the issue with the car you're, you're obviously not having that problem because you're actually playing the game, but uh. There's a lot of people whose switches aren't reading cartridges, and they have to put a headphone jack in the jack and take it out for it to read a cartridge. What? Yeah. Because you I know, never like, heard of that one. The cartridge hole and the headphone jack are like right beside each other. Right? Yeah. So, if you like put head a headphone jack in there, it like moves something around in there that closes the connection, so it will actually read a cartridge. But That's it's, like, weird. It's like a lot. It's like not just one or two people. Yeah. It's like a, like four or five. It's a thing. No, it's like <laughs> a lot. Well, they only put out ten units nationwide, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's actually a fairly high number that are having this issue. Well, so and like and there's weird. there's reports of dead pixels and and Nintendo's well, that's, saying that's gonna happen. That's yeah, gonna happen. it is. It is. But yeah, the headphone jack thing is like. Really? Like, I mean, yeah, you can fix it, but how long is that fix going to last? Yeah, that's like PlayStation level. Oh, you just turn the system upside down. Okay, yeah. when are you going to fix yeah. that? Not, it's it's exactly. not a problem. Not a problem. Well, like, <laughs> the th yeah, the thing is, is that if anyone even wanted to get it fixed, if you exchange your Switch, you're going to be waiting a long time for another Switch because they're all sold out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there there are just, actually... Phones in it. We'll, we'll talk about some of the, the news for when new Switches are going to come out during the news section, but... Um, Dave, what what's your so you have it? You've been playing it. What's yeah. your what's your impression of the hardware? What do you think about the user interface? Um, how do you think about the, the feel of the unit and how it works in handheld mode? And uh, you know, tell us your strong points, your weak points, etc. Let's let's start there. Okay. Um, first of all, I do really like this system. I'll go start right off saying that. Um, this is kind of like a, a thing like you know I love portable systems we all know that that's like you know totally my thing so immediately off the bat the system interested me for you know just being able to play you know the thing portable secondly I really like the idea of Nintendo converging all the resources on one system um, you know I've always felt that like you know when they split focus that you know they didn't have enough development resources to really fully support one thing versus the other. We waited a long time for games, so I think this is really going to help a lot um, for that. So I support the idea right off the bat. Um, as far as the feel of the system, it feels great. Uh, the tablet's, you know, hefty. It's not like this, you know, thin, you know, thing you feel like it's going to, like, you know, break just by touching it. Um, I don't like the, the battery life um, when portable. Not all that great. Uh, lasts a few hours. Um, considering that this thing is not a you know a light piece of nothing you know it's a fairly thick you know sturdy you know kind of tablet i really expected it to be at least clocking in at six um and again i've only been playing zelda it could just be the really intensive games like that that are really pushing the system drops it down you know a lot faster kind of like you know with your phone you know you're playing a you know a really detailed game on your phone you just kind of watch your battery drain but you play something lighter, like, you know, something downloadable. Like, I'm wondering, I haven't really, I also downloaded uh, Shovel Knight. Um, so I'm not sure if, like, maybe playing that, see if I can do, like, a test this weekend where I can play that for a few hours and see if that, you know, matters with battery life. I have a feeling it will. Um, but, you know, I'm playing Zelda right now. So, you, you know, you'd hope for a little bit better, but, you know, it is what it is. So that's kind of a low point of it. Um, the UI actually love it um a lot of, i mean you know a lot of people are saying like oh the store's not ready or anything it's kind of bare bones but you know something that makes it clean <laughs> and i'm actually a fan of that um the ui is really zippy i didn't expect that it's very fast um you're able to just like whip around everything you need everything's right there the uh the store like i said it is bare bones but it's quick it's super quick which is very unlike nintendo um Downloading things on the 3DS seems to take an abnormally long amount of time. Uh, so I never quite understand what they're doing, um, you know, with their interface that way. Um, not really a fan of, like, you know, the, the 3DS, for instance, is, like, it's a functional, the storefront, but it's slow. It takes a lot of time to get through stuff. Downloading is a bear. This was like, boop, boop, you're there, you're done. Everything's great. Jumping in and out of the system as far as um, switching from handheld to... You know the docked. You know, put it on your TV. 
it's instant. Like there's no lag. There's really nothing you have to do in between. Um, and it's seamless. You know, you, you jump right back into the game, you know, put you at the home screen. You just click right into the game. You're going to play and it just zaps you right back in. Kind of like, you know, on the PS4, where you just like jump back into your game. Like say if you jump out to the home screen to do something and then you jump right back into the game by just clicking it, it kind of does that kind of thing. So it actually um, it actually pops you out of the game when you pull it out of the dock? Or you just pop out of the game, pull it out of the dock. No, I'm saying if you like, if you like pop out, you know, if you pop out to the home screen, it's like instant. If you um, do it yourself, when you, he means. Okay, yeah, okay. when you pull it out of the dock, I think it goes into the like the portable mode. I have like screen lock on it, so you have to hit like the same button three times. That's like the screen lock for it. You do that, it jumps right back in. But then it just you it goes right back into you just click right back into the game, and you're exactly where you were. Like there's no. You don't have to like you know load reset or anything like that. It's just you just jump right back in, um, and that's kind of handy. You know, I was sitting there you know playing on the TV for a little bit, and you know, fiance wanted to watch something, so just popped it out, sat on the couch right next to her, started you know just continue the game. Um, works out, you know, the feature works out great. So in implementation of what they're trying to do, it works. Um, makes me kind of really excited for future iterations of this um, where they really get you know everything down um, but yeah it's um, you know pretty solid the kickstand feels a little flimsy <laughs> I don't I don't know if anybody's broken these things off yet well, but I'm... they're breakaway um, pretty much every reviewer that I've listened to review this has disconnected the kickstand at one point in time during their play testing yeah I'm I'm afraid of that. Um, I set it up once and it just it man it just feels flimsy, um, so that's not that cool. But the uh, pro, but everything... tip, pro tip or cute mm -hmm. little life hack, you know how like a lot of people are saying that the dock is scratching their screen. Put a glasses case or you know like those um, things you use to wipe your glasses. Yeah, like the microfiber. Yeah, the microfiber. Put cloth. that in the dock because then it prevents it from scratching and it cleans the screen at the same time. Yeah, I saw. I just actually saw that like right before we got down here, um, right before I came downstairs for this. Um, I haven't seen any issues with that, and I'm kind of like you know a screen cleaning you know freak about it. Um, so I'm not sure if like maybe somebody bent their dock or something like that, or the dock's nothing. It's a hunk of plastic. Um, so there's no, there's nothing special in that dock at all, except for a couple connectors. Um, so yeah. Um, they could have done a better job. Like I said, they, they should have had like a couple pads on there or something to keep the screen from touching, you know, the plastic if that's going to happen. So they could have designed that a little bit better. Um, the controllers, great. Um, I actually haven't used the Joy-Cons in their little connector thing to make them into a controller. I've used them, you know, separately for the, you know, the one two switch game. Um, but the rest is when I'm doing, you know, I'm playing on the TV. I'm using the Pro Controller. Do you have? Do you find the Joy-Con buttons really small for your hands? No, but I also have tiny hands. Because just when I first see them, they almost look like mini M and M's. Like they're like they seem really small. They're small. Um, not gonna lie. I've heard, great, I've heard great things about the Pro Controller, how it feels. The Pro Controller is it's seriously in the top three controllers that I've ever used. Um. They, it is, I mean, it's right up there, I'll probably say, with the, um, the original Xbox S controller, which is just, I think, one of the most comfortable controllers of all time. It's just, it's sturdy, just worked great. Um, the other cool thing, I charged it once, and I've been playing a ton of Zelda on the thing. I, I don't know, I mean, I saw somewhere where it said, like, this thing has 70 hours battery life. What? Why couldn't they put this battery in that? That's what I want. <laughs> I mean, I know that's doing a lot more, but still, like, my PlayStation controller, I'm lucky if I get through, like, one or two PlayStations with those things. Um, one, or, one or two play sessions with those things. <laughs> like, I don't understand what, did Sony not put a battery in these things? Like, I feel like I'm charging the PS4 controllers all the time. Does anybody else have this issue? No, I, or... I charge the PS4. Con I go through two a day in most cases. Yeah, like why? I didn't know if it was just me, but the battery life on those things suck. Like I have to have an extra controller just to make sure I can play. I'm yeah. fairly, I'm fairly close to my TV, so I can actually charge while I'm playing. Yeah. 
Um, I can't right. really tell because we got too many people using the controllers, so we've got two that just constantly swap in and out. So yeah, that's what I do too. Yeah, I always have to have one on standby. There's like sometimes yeah. I forget to plug the other one in. I'm just like, damn it. Well, guess I'm not gaming on the PS4 tonight. So you I talked about the things you you like, Dave. What are the things you don't like about the Switch? Like I said, battery life. Um, I'm not a fan of that. Do you have um, an issue with not being able to move the save files or anything like that? No, I really can't think of a use case as to what the issue would be so far. I mean, other than being able to take your game and your save to somebody else's house and load it up on their Switch. I yeah, but that, even then, like, I don't want them touching my save. <laughs> no, I mean for you to, <laughs> for them, you nugget. Well, then you drop your switch in their dock. Well, oh man, that that sounds like a party foul to me. No, no, no. no but Dave's not really a social gamer, though. <laughs> yeah. So well, Dave's not really a gamer, so I mean that that's kind no, of no. But but seriously, thing. that's no. But that brings up that brings up a that brings up a kind of a, a thing like this. That's that's different about the system. You're like, oh, if you take it over to your friend's house and you want to put your your game save on their switch, why would it, you don't have to? You can just drop your switch in, you know, their dock, and if you want to play your game on their TV, you can do it that way. Yeah, you know, but or if, if you're you want to share time. saves and then you want to go home, I think that's what Matt that, was alluding to. Like, if you're share, saving, why, why why would I want to help? No, that doesn't stupid. Why would I ever do that? I wouldn't want to get docked. He's more because. thinking about people who are nice to other people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's they uh, can nah, they can play their own game. Um, get there and say that's that's not a big deal. So if you were going to do an actual review on the switch <laughs> you know bre- break it down what would you what would you give it at, out of a, on a 10 point scale i mean that's tough because see i'm a, I'm a terrible reviewer for for stuff because i judge it based on you know overall i judge it based on the amount of fun i'm having well oh, yeah okay but but in, in based off of what you paid for it the fun mm-hmm. you've got out of it the the experience you've had with it, where would that right. fall for recommending it to other people and giving them kind of a sense of value and fun on the ten point well, scale? Here's here's the thing. It's expensive at the gate because it's new, you know. So you're paying the early adopter tax no matter what. Mm-hmm. Nintendo usually doesn't lower their console prices that much though, so it might lower like fifty bucks in the future. I don't know. That's going to go much lower than this. Yeah, I mean, that's not necessarily true. I mean, we just are used to seeing a couple console revisions not last long enough, so <laughs> for them to have deep discounts. Um, I mean, like if you look at their handhelds, I mean they've dropped drastically, you know, for the most part, until they release new ones. Um, so it is expensive out the, uh, out of the gate. If you're a huge Zelda fan, you know, it's it's worth it because that game is just it, it's worth it to me um it's a fantastic game um what you get in the box i mean there should be a packing game for that price um one two one two switch should be a packing game it just should i don't understand why they didn't pack that in it shows off you know the system's capabilities it does a lot of fun stuff with the controller it really really shows the system like you know what the unique things about it are that should be that should have been in the box. Just like Wii Sports was in the box, right? For the Wii, that was a pack in. Yeah, the contention that I've seen is that Wii Sports only had five to six mini games on it, whereas One Two Switch has fifty six crafted mini games Which, for the stuff. Really, I, I'm not. Really, I'm not. I'm not really, disagreeing with you. That should be a packing yeah. game. But yeah. I'm playing devil's yeah. advocate, and they're saying there was so much more development time spent on One Two Switch. And I, and I get that, because let me tell you, I didn't know that right off the bat. And when you start up the game, you only have access to about seven of them. As like, you know, as you start off. And as I started playing, I was just like, I paid $60 for these things. I was about to like punch people. And then all of a sudden, like after you play a few of them, it, it unlocks everything. And then the, the, whole, so the whole screen, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, now people will live. But still... They could have thrown it as a pack in. I mean, I remember I bought a you know when I bought the 3ds, they did that ambassador program, mm-hmm. and it just gave you like a ton of free content. Some of it exclusive that I don't think ever actually hit the store to this point. Um, and it's just like they're 
What happened to that Nintendo? I like that Nintendo. Remember when Nintendo was your friend? I will was... give I will give one to Switch credit where credit is due, though. Watching two people stare intently into each other's eyes while making jerk off motions while playing the milking the cow game is <laughs> worth sixty dollars. It's I have to hilarious. tell hilarious. <laughs> it it was hilarious. Um, that game came up in the rotation, um, and it was awkward. It felt creepy. <laughs> that HD rumble feature in those Joy Cons. And if that... you watch the screen, the milk is squirting all over yeah. the screen. Yes, it is. <laughs> like Nintendo, you're supposed to be family friendly. It is. Yeah, you know, I, I will say this is another thing where, that I agree kind of along the lines of what Matt was saying before. Every reviewer that I have seen tackle One Two Switch. Uh, there was a great video of uh, uh, from Vice where they're going through the Switch at the same time and they're playing with one of the game creators and it's this guy with a giant afro and he's looking intently at this at the yeah. Japanese creator and they're milking the cow. He's like, this is so weird. This is so <laughs> <Yeah>. creepy. <laughs> it is. I'm trying not to, just try not to let, like, just trying to actually do the thing with like, you know, while like laughing. And it is, like, you really have to, like, there's little buttons on the back of the Joy-Con, and you have to, like, roll your fingers like you're doing it. Like, I mean, it's it's way more involved than you should be comfortable with. Um, but <laughs> it was a hell of a lot of fun. Um, it is, I already, like, you know, the, the nephew is already saying, like, you know, he turned to his dad right away, and he was just like, don't you think this would be cool in our house? Like, <laughs> he was, like, selling it for his birthday, so he's getting one for his birthday in a couple months. Um, so I've already sold one of them just by, hopefully. you know, letting somebody play it. Assuming there's any stock in a couple of months. Yeah, hopefully. I'm sure they'll be able to find something. I mean, so it's a couple I, months. I, I do have a viewer question, um, if you're, if you're, uh, so inclined sure. to take. Um, asked what you would think of, uh, there being either a Nintendo branded or third party battery pack for the Switch in tablet mode. If it's not super, like, heavy and bulky. I mean, the thing is not... It's not light. Like this is How's not the, the lightest system. It's it's How comfortable. How does the hardware feels... feel? I mean, is it does it feel cheap? Does it feel plasticky? Does it feel solid? No. Okay. Um. Initially, I thought it was gonna. I thought it was gonna feel real like light and you know just plasticky and like I was gonna break it. Um. I mean, I'm careful with it because I I don't want to sit there and like you know throw it or anything. Um. But it. It does feel good. It feels solid. The Joy Cons feel solid. The Pro Controller is just a rock. I mean, that thing's great. The um, it's yeah. I mean, the system itself, like everything's, it seems well built. You know, um, I'm not having any issues aside from just like you know, constant fear of like losing that kickstand. I, I uh, have another uh, viewer question. Sure. Have you? It, this comes from Reggie. Have you licked it? The system? The no, Reggie. The, the, my yes. body is ready, Reggie. Yes, that is correct. <clears throat> the system, no. The cartridge, yes. I, I licked. I licked the Zelda card. I have a, a request that you do do lick it live on the show. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's just. Yeah, that's not happening. I don't. Yeah. Nintendo bitterant solvent will be like a new bad flavor in Bean Boozled. It's oh God. it was it's it's not like it it's not like you taste it you're just like whoa, whoa. it's just like no this is not pleasant. Um, and there's <laughs> clearly curious, on. And I think we need to do this for science. Right, is, I agree. It, As a scientific record, <laughs> we need to see you do this. Oh, we God. need to see how many licks it takes before to get to the, the center the, the of a Nintendo cartridge. Here's, exactly. here's the One, uh, the limit. Here's the uh, the the. The special edition Zelda that oh, came nice. with a case, a um, which is actually like matches like what it looks like in the game. Yeah, the sheet metal, whatever. A three. Yeah, the, the the tablet that's in the game. Okay, here's here's three two switch. No, not one two, not one two switch. It's right. gonna be Zelda. I already looked. They both Zelda. have the same bitter in on them. Yeah, right, everything. Right, that's fine. That's everything fine. is the same. I don't want to take the game out. Come on, man. Yeah, it's just nasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Science! Just put a 
been a toad. Oh god, that's actually worse than the Zelda one. <laughs> oh. oh. I don't remember the Zelda one being that bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, hilarious. that's science. Oh, well, at least you know maybe, that maybe it's the quality of the game. Better quality games yeah. taste yeah. better. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Less bitter. Alex will never swallow it yet. Yeah. Oh, that no, that was nasty. That was yeah, that was worse. Oh, <laughs> that's not leaving. <laughs> oh, I hate you people. <laughs> oh. So I think so again. Based on your experience so far, where would you rate it on a 10-point scale? I mean, I'm giving this a little bit of potential points. I mean, here's the, here's the thing. The weakness is it's not the most cutting-edge system graphically. You know, Horizon Zero Dawn versus Zelda. Which one looks better? Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn. Zero Dawn. Yeah. This is not the system that's going to, like, you know, take out everybody. It's, you know, it's a Nintendo system. You're buying it for Nintendo games. Does it look good? Yes. You know, does it play on HGTV and look fine? Yes. Um, Zelda, the artwork and everything is great. So I'm, I am giving a little bit of potential points in there for like, you know, I think things are going to get, you know, a little better for it. I'm, I'm giving the thing a nine right now. Okay. Um, the amount of fun that I've had with it, the potential I see in it, um, as long as the games continue to show up for it and it doesn't have any catastrophic failures um, for me at least, <laughs> I'm going to give this system a high mark. It is a convergent idea of things that I've wanted for a long time. Um, it's implemented them well, so I'm very. I was very excited about from the start of it, and you know, yeah, I'm going to give it a solid nine right now. Can things so be better? Sure, but personally, I like it. So Jeff uh, wrote in and said, uh, Dave is right, Zelda is dope, so why don't you tell us about the dope Zelda? Oh, God, it's so good. It's just so good. The I, I really expect, like, when I first started playing Horizon Zero Dawn, I was just like, damn, this is, this is like, you know, in my head, I was just like, man, this is kind of what, like, you know, I'd love a Zelda game like this. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> so, it's, um, it's definitely a different take on, you know, Zelda. There's a lot of different stuff. You know, it's completely open. You can do whatever you want. I wound up, like, you know, gunning straight toward the castle. Like, at one point, I did, like, one thing and then kind of backtracked. I was like, oh, let me check out, you know, there. Realized pretty soon that I was not supposed to be in that area yet because things were really nasty. And I had to get the hell out of Dodge quickly. And it didn't work out so well. <laughs> but it's just like, you can... You know, you can do it. Doesn't mean it's a good idea, but you can do it. Um, the whole bit where they added a, um, you have a stamina bar, you know, basically, which you level up throughout the game. So that's kind of your early limitation is, you know, you can climb and go anywhere, but you, you run out of stamina. So if you see like a rock face, you can climb up that rock face, no problem, but eventually you're going to run out of gas. There's ways you can game it um, because you can through the cooking mechanics, you can, you know, make yourself elixirs and stuff like that that'll increase your stamina. And you can do that mid, like, wall climb. So you're climbing up a wall, you know, refill your stamina, and you can get all the way back up. There's just tons of different ways to attack stuff. Um, Talk about the map there... system for, for a minute, because it's, it's a different... What we're used to in most RPGs is you'll climb a tower... And suddenly it's vomit on the map. Here's all the 90 things you have to do. How does the map system yeah. work in Zelda? Well, you climb a tower. <laughs> <laughs> and the map, and you're, that unlocks the area on your map. So it's like okay. an Assassin's Creed tower. No. You know, well, you know something? I've never played Assassin's Creed, so I can't tell you. So you can yeah, climb anything in Zelda... And and that, this is kind of it was a leading question because I knew the answer already. You can climb anything; it doesn't. But yes, you climb certain things, and it will unlock the fog of war on the map. But it doesn't yes. put anything on the map. You say, see, oh, that looks interesting over there. I right. want to go check it out, and you mark it on the map with a stamp. Right. It gives but you a good vantage point. Yeah, the game doesn't give you anything to go do. 
which no. is different. It's the opposite of what we're seeing in almost every other game. Yeah, there's no hand-holding in this game whatsoever. Like, the cooking mechanic is how you get everything. You can just collect stuff and eat it, you know, off the ground and everything, and that's fine. But to get the real value out of stuff, you have to cook it. You know, cook it and mix things. There's a lot, there's a whole sub-game, you know, based on that. There's absolutely no instruction on what to do. Like, none. <laughs> so, like, you really have to figure it out all yourself. Um, there's some, like, hints, like, to some of the items, like, you know, oh, you know, this does, you know, this. You know, if you have, like, a certain thing, you can tell by the color or the name of it that it, like, you know, helps your heat resistance or cold resistance or something. You know, so you mix things together that way. But as far as the actual mechanics on how to do it, either I missed it somehow <laughs> or it just wasn't in the game at all. You didn't um, miss it. Yeah, there was, there was nothing. So I actually, like, had to figure I was looking for a, an actual pot to hold over fire. Like, I thought you had to get, like, some kind of cooking implement. But here they're just, like, scattered around, you know, the ground. Um, so they're kind of, like, you know, at a campsite, basically. Um, I love that part of the game, the whole cooking mechanic thing, just being able to, like, mix stuff and figure out new ways to do things. Like, you know, putting out your head, you, you find a bunch of items and figure out how to, like, max out, you know, the, um, the properties of them. So, like, you know, if you mix, like, a fish that gives you attack power with an herb that gives you attack power and then some meat that gives you attack power and some rice, <laughs> you know? you get these great super attack power rice balls, you know? Um, so there's all kinds of just fun things you do with that. And, you know, I love to cook, so that's one of the stupid things that just, like, really tickle me. Um, the weapon system in the game, kind of weak sauce at first. Because um, as you're going you through, like, that? you pick up... Everything dies. <laughs> Everything, yeah, everything like a, yeah, weapon, all your weapons die. There's a breakability. Yeah. yeah. There's not a, there's not a single weapon that doesn't break in the game apparently. Um. So that's annoying because, like, you know, if you are the type that gets like, you know, oh, I really like this sword. Guess what? Don't get attached. Don't name it. Because it's going away soon. Um. There is you know, ones you can get that have, like, you know, uh, bonuses on them, like, you know, they have an extra attack bonus, they have a durability bonus, you see that a lot. Um, they last a little bit longer, but still, you know, you go around on a rampage, that thing's not lasting long at all. You know, you use it to open up box, you know, to open up crates and everything, you know, smash stuff, it's going even quicker. Um, bombs are unlimited in the game. That's a cool thing. <clears throat> a lot of your your secret things oh like old Zelda games you would have to actually unlock all your powers like slowly but surely this gives you everything pretty much right at the beginning of the game so you have all the tools necessary to take on any of the puzzles in the game right from the start so so let's you talk about like, that let's talk about yeah. that for a minute so I know there mm -hmm. are some that are in there and some that are not like I know the hook shot is not in the game no. Um, what or, what yeah. what do you kind Not of start so with? So you have um, you have bombs, two types of bombs, and they're unlimited. They're just a recharge. Um, you have a round bomb and you have a square bomb, you know, a cube bomb. So the cube bomb is so it doesn't roll anywhere. There's physics all over the game. So the cool thing is, you know, you have a, a you know you have the round bomb. Say you see like you know some enemies at the bottom of a hill or something. They haven't seen you yet. Well, you just want to drop a bomb on the ground. It rolls down. As it rolls down, they, they see it and go, like, what's this? And you can set it off. Remote, they're all remote detonated. So you can have a lot of fun that way. Square bombs, they don't roll. So you put them somewhere where you want to run away and just, like, you know, have something specific blow up. You have a, a giant, you know, magnet that's for, like, you know, pulling metal things and moving things around that way. You have the um, this thing that freezes, um, you know, makes pillars of, ice pop up in water so you use that to you know climb up places you know stop things up um, you can like you know raise gates with them or anything like that you see like a little puddle of water under a gate you can't get through the gate but you can slide an ice pillar up and that raises the gate for you so there's a lot of like really cool things to do with that and there's also a um, like a time stopping uh, rune that you have that gives you not only the ability to just freeze something 
um, but also it lets you store kinetic energy. Um, like say there's a like a big metal ball, and you can't push it because it's too heavy for you to push, but you need to get it from one place to another. You can go up to it, hit it with stasis, which is the, the time, I think that's what the time thing's called. You hit it with that. There's a time limit on you know that how long it how long it lasts. You start hitting away with it with your weapons, and you see the arrow actually build up. The more you hit it, the more potential it has. And then as soon as it wears, as soon as the time stop wears off, it launches. The kinetic the kinetic energy build up just launches it wherever you have it so go. So you're gambit. No. <laughs> Sounds like gambit to me. Don't say that. It doesn't you're explode. Zelda gambit. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, but, explode. Yeah, but it you're just, still it charging it with potential kinetic energy and making it fly away from you. Ish. I mean, you're stopping time first. I mean, <laughs> I love how how you're already trying to go to lengths to separate those two ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you have you only mucked about in the open world, or have you have have you actually gone into some of the dungeons and shrines and stuff? Ton, yeah, I've done a ton. You know, um, well, not a ton. I mean, I'm sure there's some. I don't know exactly how many I've taken on yet. Um, but they're really cool. I love the way they do the stuff in the game. So there's all these shrines in the game. Shrines are basically... In fact. There's a hundred of them? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Looking forward to playing them all. They're little bite-sized dungeons, basically. Um, that, you know, usually all have some kind of hook to them that's like, you know, different like puzzle you have to solve. Usually involving more than one you know, more than one of your abilities. It's not just like, you know, the early ones show you how to use your individual abilities you know, for your first little, you know, starting area. But then, you know, after that, you have to combine them in, you know, new and fun ways. And so far, they're all pretty clever. Um, I really dig that. I did get to the first major, you know, dungeon in the game, basically. And yeah, you got to put in some time for them. So, there. so typically dungeons have been, you know, all the way back to the first Legend of Zelda, you get an item and the uh, a tool and then a key item for progression you you've already mentioned that you don't really get tools from dungeons anymore you kind of basically start out with the whole pack right does completing a dungeon still feel worthwhile without going into sp details and spoilers and such yes because i mean it seems like the the main dungeons are a, a key story point in the game of, of things that you're doing um in so addition you know you get you dungeons know dungeons basically are you know, not they're like that is how you progress the story correct yeah yeah unless you just go to the castle and face off oh, yeah yep. <laughs> yeah i don't know how you're supposed to do that right in the beginning of the game i mean i'm sure some insane person is able to What's it? Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, By the way, a Atticus says, "Yeah, that's Gambit. That's so Gambit." <laughs> don't don't encourage him. The uh, <laughs> Mark's never right. The uh, <laughs> so um, I'm trying to think. It's so because there's so much in the game. Um, now, you haven't played a lot of open world RPGs that have come out in recent years, right? No, actually, um, probably the last one I played was uh, well, uh, Fallout Three. It was probably the the most recent one, um, which so was back on the PS3. When when I first heard you talking like this, I'm like, well, this is just Dave. Dave just hasn't played an open world RPG in a long time. But you, listening to other folks doing the reviews, even the ones that have been playing everything that's been coming out, it's the same. So there there is some unique element to this game that is enamoring people that nobody has yet been able to quantify it's um well see the thing is i, I think it's i Jeff think it says... is basically just no, go ahead hmm? Dave. i'm sorry no it, it's basically just the world is like it's it's that zelda magic is there you know um not to sound you know lame about it but it just it just is it's just it's really high quality the art style is just kind of it's great, you know, it has that, it's got that hook that just really draws you into it. Um, 
the way the kind of story is like you know evolving everything like that the characters seem you know everything seems just really that you know it's that classic kind of nintendo when it's great it is just phenomenal um jeff, jeff says that the what he really likes about the game is that if you think a thing will work it probably will yeah i have to say that's true um there's a lot of times where you're like trying to figure out how to get to like you know one place versus another and i'm like all right you know i'm kind of gauging it by like you know eyesight and i was just like all right i think i can get there but i don't think i have enough you know stamina to get there but you know i have a couple refills yeah we're going you know we're, <laughs> we're doing it and you know you can get there so if it's I don't, yeah it's just i don't know it's just fun um uh, get, to to your point matt um i was listening to uh, giant bomb this week and they were joking and they made a joke that there's Miyamoto juice that is the magic secret and they can only <laughs> they can only release two games per year that have it because they only have so much Miyamoto juice left <laughs> and so so they they used a bunch of it on this and hopefully they have enough left over for for the Mario game but then no all bets are off for, for after that yeah so uh, I, yeah, I mean, the say is like it's specifically what it is like. Oh, this is what like you know. This is why I'm playing this over Verizon, or Verizon, <laughs> Verizon, <laughs> Verizon Zero Verizon Data, Verizon Ver- Brian Zero Data. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just they're both wonderful games. I mean, I am so looking forward to getting back to Horizon. So it's not like not an issue in any way, shape, or form. Like as as that game is like subpar compared to this they're both fantastic games it's just Zelda for some reason keep me up till 3 a.m I think it's um Horizon, more... Horizon has just this like just gorgeousness rich real worldness Zelda has all the artistic charm yeah. like, and I think that's what draws me in personally to it because I'm always more of a fan of an artistic representation versus complete realism or anything like that and i think that's why i'm hmm? oh i just was gonna say i find with horizon the characters look great but there's still there there's a little bit of uncanny valley sometimes yeah where it's especially in like the glossiness of the eyes or something yeah whereas zelda's more stylized so it doesn't have that where it's just like that look guy like or sometimes i find they're a little wooden in especially when you have like their two people talking to each other and you have the options wheel whereas zelda is all artistic direction so it doesn't have that issue so it's yeah, like, the most two, part two totally different things though but two yeah different it's just two totally game. different styles well what what i'm finding interesting is the fact that <laughs> when you look at the premise of the two games they're actually really really similar they're the same game pretty much they're just, yeah, yeah they're they're the same it's, it's, it's yeah. kind of uncanny that they both came out within the same week telling the yeah. same story so yeah. that's kind of interesting to me. there's there's a lot of similarity, um, which is which is kind of hilarious. Which is why one thing, um, one thing I will say negatively about Zelda, just from I haven't played it, obviously I'm just watching. It went the Dark Souls route of only having music at like encounters. There isn't like the overworld theme. There is a lack of music in Breath of the Wild, and I wish there was more music. Sometimes because Zelda music is. Like, because I think I find it's not just Zelda, but a lot of games are going the road because Dark Souls is so successful that they're like, oh, we'll make it more like Dark Souls, where it's like, you know, the boss music is super epic and stuff, but there's no music just wandering around. And it's, but it's like, Zelda's not Dark Souls because Dark Souls does that because it's so bleak and oppressive. Whereas Zelda, those are two words I would never ever use to describe Zelda ever in history of ever. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, but you know, Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo. But I, yeah, I just wish there was some more music, because Zelda's had some great music over the course of its. You, you definitely get it when you're like in places. Um, yeah, I just found um like watching going through the plateaus. It's like I just wish there was like a, yeah. a nice mellow overworld theme here. It would be nice. No, nah, I get that. I can see that one. Um, I didn't quite notice it so much because it kind of made sense in the world. Yeah. Well, I and guess I think they, I think they do a them. good, yeah. They, I think they do a good job of like as you're playing it, like everything makes sense. See, the difference, I think, is you're playing it, whereas I'm just watching yeah. someone play it. So maybe I notice the lack of music more because I'm not actually playing it. Yeah, because actually that was interesting because I didn't notice that until you mentioned it, and I'm just like thinking, I'm like, man, is she right? Yeah, you're right. 
<laughs> um, but it didn't, you know, matter. It worked. And as you're going from like place to place and everything, and you know, you have encounters and stuff. And it's, I will say you know, too, for people who cannot afford to get a Switch or who couldn't get one because it sold out or whatever reason, the Breath of the Wild version on the Wii U runs perfectly fine. Like if you if you have to get it for the Wii U, it's not that inferior. You're getting slightly more resolution on the Switch, obviously. But the performance is, is pretty much equal. In towns and like other places, the Switch runs it better. But when you're actually like in grass and stuff like that, the Wii U actually runs that better than the Switch for some reason. I don't know why. But That's most, not get- most of the slowdown that I've seen reported for the Wii U version is only in the beginning of the game. Yeah, the Wii U version still runs great. So if you're like, well, I really want Zelda, but it's like, you know, if you're thinking of it as like how Twilight Princess was, where, you know, the the new version, the new console version was obviously the better choice for Twilight Princess, you're still getting pretty much the exact same thing on a Wii U as you would get on a Switch for Breath of the Wild. So, like, don't feel like it's like, oh, you know, I really, really have to get a Switch for this game. You can still play it perfectly fine on a Wii U if you need to. Or if and you Matt, like- that, that brings up the question, what will you do? That That is an excellent question. Um, <clears throat> get it. <laughs> the, you have a Wii U, I'd say get it. We, yeah, we have no, a Wii U. Um, I'm a reason not to. And and I, I I don't know I'm 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 not getting it yet because I'm not 100 percent sure what we're doing on the Switch front because if we're gonna end up getting a Switch, I'd rather just hold off and have it be the Switch game that we get. Um, if we don't ultimately, then yeah, I'll, I'll pick it up for the Wii U. I think the only significant difference is I I think I read this somewhere and you can fact check me on this one. I don't think the DLC is going to be available for the Wii U version. Mm, I don't think that's correct. I believe I just read a story that said that they were getting the same. Jeff is currently playing on the Wii U. And he says it's absolutely fine. Um, the Wii U version. Okay. But I, I could I, be wrong I'll on that. I, that. I swear I read that somewhere earlier. But um, I, 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 I have a desperate want for a Switch. I don't know why. I can't explain it. Uh, you know, is it just a techno thing? Is it? Is it that I? Is it just that I want to experience myself? I don't know. If I sat down with one for half an hour at somebody's house, would I be fine and over it? I, I don't know. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm going to wait a while, see how the whole thing settles out on, on where we think we're going to do with the Switch. And if it looks like a Switch is more than a year out in our future, then, yeah, I'll probably pick it up for Wii U. Looks... And, uh... oh, go ahead. And another another feature I want to talk about that you know shames me so the amiibo support. Oh yeah, thank you. I was actually going to bring that up. <laughs> These things are gold. Okay, I'm I'm loving the way they run amiibo support in there. So um, amiibos finally have a purpose, is what you're saying? Yeah. Well, they had. I mean, I had some amiibos before for like the Kirby game. Um. The Kirby game on the 3DS was awesome because you could sit there and pop Amiibos on and it would give you the different Kirby abilities. Um, so that was a lot of fun, like, you know, finding which Amiibos had, you know, different abilities. So I had, you know, I, I had a bunch of Amiibos for that. Um, I did go full bore and get all the Zelda Amiibos because they are useful to have in this game. Uh, once a day, you can sit there and pop your different Amiibos on and it basically gives you all a ton of free stuff. Um, and it's not just the Zelda Amiibos. You can use, like, you know, you can use the regular ones, the non-Zelda ones, and they'll give you, like, food fixings, basically. So you'll get, like, you know, you'll get, like, food and, like, you know, stuff for crafting food and everything. So incredibly useful. So if you have a bunch of Amiibos that aren't Zelda-related laying around, you know, that's great. If you have the Zelda ones, um, and they are very much worth getting, you get special weapons, shields, you know, other crafting items that aren't as common in the game. Um, you can you can mess up getting Epona. Because <laughs> <laughs> mine ran off because I got stuck in a part and, like, I couldn't take the horse. So then the horse ran off and then I found out that, like, you know, that may be the only time I see that horse in the game because it's not coming back. So I'm a little bit pissed off there. Um, so hopefully that's 
not the case, and one day it'll just respawn uh, when I hit the amiibo. But the, um, you know, this guy here, man, he gives you some nice swords, and that's on a daily basis. So tomorrow when I play the game, I am locked and loaded and ready to go. So, And Matt, from every Pete article that I just looked at, it looks like they are getting parity with DLC. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's something I misread somewhere then. Um, that could have been just in, like an early thing. Something that raises yeah. a question mark for me, and it's not a knock against Zelda, it's more a knock against <laughs> reviewers, is Zelda got tens, like, across, pretty much across the board, like, as a review. Mm -hmm. Horizon Zero Dawn didn't get tens. It got close, but it didn't get tens. They're essentially the same game. So I'm kind of, like, wondering if this wasn't Zelda would it have gotten less than 10 if it was just like hey cute game and it was just like you know lonk and not link and it was just like you know that came up in that same giant bomb podcast <laughs> i don't yeah. listen to john bomb so well, no like, but it is i i i i tend to think i tend to think that the scores are right from my own personal analysis of the two games i've played a little bit of legend of zelda at kiosks i spent like two hours there was nobody in the best buy that had one so i stood there and played it for two hours i've watched a lot that's online dedication. as well huh <laughs> that's dedication right there yeah i mean little kids came up and i pushed them over and kept playing but the the, did the whole a, did you pull a chair over from like the office supply section <laughs> no yeah, <I> did not. <laughs> um I, I, I obviously am very cursorily in it, but what Matt was alluding to, I'm trying to figure out how to even articulate this. So I've, uh, I'm 15 hours into Horizon Zero Dawn. I am enjoying the hell out of that game, and for I, I sit there every time I play it, and I I say I can't believe this is a guerrilla made game. If this is what letting a developer do what they have in their head, we should let all developers do what they have in their head, because this is amazing. But, that being said, I think a lot of the little things add up to subtract parts of a point that you were talking about. There's the time where they they seem wooden when they're talking to each other, or, um, you know, the lip syncing is off. And these are all technical quibbles, but... They take away from the overall experience. The the marker system for getting from point A to point B, the Google Maps type of st style, where it's sending me backwards to get to where I need to go. It's, it, it's a... They're, they're super minor things. You can turn um, that off, you know. Yeah, no, I know. In fact, I had the exact opposite problem. I'm the one who started the game without the Google Maps thing, and it was taking me backwards. And now that I've turned them on, I have no problem getting from point A to point B. Yeah. So, yeah, of course I'm upwards for everybody, opposite of everybody. I might have to switch that on, because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, so, so when you start the game, at least for me, it just gives you the end point. Yeah, and that's all I And a have. lot of times it it's really confusing you for some reason as you're walking around. It looks like it's behind you when, yeah. in fact, it's in front of you. Well, so you can turn on a Google Maps-like setting that takes you 300 meters and you always see it from wherever you are and then it gives you the next 300 meters. So it's taking you via waypoints instead of just giving you the endpoint. And it makes it, for me, a whole lot easier to get there because it's not appearing like it's behind me or something. There are... Uh, that game is super fluid, especially in the combat. But I do feel like combat's a little bit broken because almost anywhere in the game you can hide in tall grass, whistle at some at one person, the other people don't hear it, and they walk right up to you going, Well, I got a bad feeling about this. Gah, I'm dead. So, I mean, it's like... I think it's a great first outing. But when you play Zelda, it feels like the polish of 30 years worth of gaming behind a bunch of new systems and i don't know that yeah. i have a word for that but that's kind of that i think to me that's the difference between the two it has and a quintessence yes, that the other yeah, lack 
And Zelda's not... I'm not saying Zelda's perfect either. I don't think any game is perfect, but... No, I mean, there's get... technical things you can sit there... Like, one thing that annoys me sometimes, I am a... Like, sometimes when I play these things, I'm an overly cautious planner. Like, I like, you know, looking ahead. Like, if you give me a scope, I'm going to look through it and, like, really scope out the situation and see where I'm going. And I go see, I was like, okay, I see a little section there where it looks like there's a watchtower, but there's nobody on it. There's a camp, but there's nobody there. I was like, okay, it's clear. And I start going. Next thing you know, pop, there they are. And I'm like, oh, you sons of bitches. (laughs) So you have to get to a certain point where, like, you know, the guys pop in. Um, and you can see them. Um, so, I mean, that's a technical, you know, quibble that, you know, has affected it. But once you get used to just, like, you know, the distances and stuff, then, you know, it's fine. But as far as, like, the overall enjoyment, like, it, yeah, it definitely didn't really take anything, you know, away from the overall enjoyment of the game. And, and I think um, that's, that's part of it. I mean, with Zelda, you go into it with expectation, whereas Horizon, you're not going into it with expectation. And you would think right. that that would actually be a boon to Horizon, but when you go into Zelda with those expectations and then you see them met in ways that you hadn't thought about, I think that's mm-hmm. where suddenly you're you're pushing Zelda forward in the scores because they're actually still managing to break out of their con- 30 years of convention but still push the genre forward for what they do. Whereas yeah. Horizon is the first one and so you don't have any expectations going in and so great you're surprised it's a great game but they're not showing you that they're i mean i guess there's an argument to be made that if you play kill zone then you're kind of going in with some expectations at that point but a lot of people haven't played kill zone but a, a you know hundreds of millions of people have played zelda um jeff says that it, for him it's the first 3d zelda that feels just like the original game and so I think yeah. that's kind of what I'm speaking to is is like you've got in your mind what Zelda is and here they've presented you something very different. I would almost call it Monster Hunter-esque or Dark Souls-esque. Don't. In terms of how they're pushing <laughs> how they're pushing the series forward but at the same time still keeping what the, the quintessence, as Matt said, of what Zelda is and managing to distill that through that lens. And I think that's why it gets higher reviews. I can't personally say it's a 10. I've not played enough of it. I can say I really enjoyed what I play, but I'm also really enjoying what I play of Horizon Zero Dawn, but I haven't played enough of that to get to the end to be able to say, oh, it's a 10 or it's a 9.7 or whatever it is. Yeah, I don't my think thing. You're never finishing another game, Mark. I think you're just going to just keep <laughs> game hopping and. I, your... I don't. Mark and I, Mark I, and I have to switch places. That's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm, I promised. Myself... Wait, hold on a second. Uh, there's also one other thing I love about the system. There doesn't seem to be any trophy support or achievements or anything <laughs> like that. Which you is know, that, that actually, <laughs> that actually is is. An inhibitor a for me buying a yeah, Switch. Yeah, it's a for me too. I hate, I hate that that's a true statement, but <laughs> if The Legend of Zelda was on PlayStation 4 with a trophy support, I would have it already. Yeah. <laughs> that is, I, I love Nintendo for not caving in and doing that. I'm sure that's going to be like added later as a feature or something stupid, but <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I'm just happy it wasn't out on day one. Just made me I, ideally what they would do what they should do for that though is so you get the equivalent of a platinum trophy in breath of the wild and you get a free virtual console copy of link to the past or something well, here's know? the thing i'm wondering i'm wondering if they are actually going to kind of include that because actually the ground um there's a little bit of groundwork that's kind of there um for their new online you know account thing that they have set up if you go looking in there there's actually you get points for like, say, if you buy a game, you get bonus points. You know, for that, you get these coins that you store up. So every time you buy a game, and it's actually built into the UI of the Switch, where you go into the game options, and it says like, you know, collect, you know, your your coins for this game. So if you have a cartridge-based version of Zelda, then you can collect the, you know a certain amount of coins for that. So I'm wondering if actually, since if you go to the website, there's actually they have it tied into the mobile games too, where if you do certain things on the mobile game, you can get extra coins. 
to do things. So honestly, the groundwork's there. They can sit there and tie that also to things that happen in game, and then you earn coins, you know, for this whatever, you know, Nintendo version of the Nintendo Club that they have now. Um, so I don't think it's actually too far along. I, th- I think it'll be there sooner rather than later. So just in a different form. Let's move from Nintendo's hubbub to the news. We're not going to move too far because we're going to talk about the Switch some more. But uh, the Switch has set a new 48-hour sales record for a Nintendo console. It is, in fact, the strongest start the company's ever had when it comes to launching hardware. Uh, so Including they, portables they have... in Japan? What's that? Including portables in Japan? Apparently so. Uh, it says well, well here's in the, the Americas. In the Amer- right? No, no, just the Americas, just the Americas. Just the Americas. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, it Friday Saturday sales for Nintendo uh, Switch exceeded it. first two day sales in Americas for any system in Nintendo history. Next biggest was the Wii. So no, that does not include. We sold a lot. Yeah, it did. Um, People were really excited about that, and that also had a cheaper price point. It did. It did. Um, and related to that, uh, somewhere here I have something that says the GameStop is going to have new bundles for yep here we go for the Switch starting at five hundred and ten dollars. They are guaranteed to arrive no later than Easter. So uh, the bundles are priced at five ten and six hundred. The 510 bundle, which is the starter bundle, comes with the console, a copy of Zelda Breath of the Wild, its expansion pass, a copy of Super Bomberman R, and a gray Joy-Con. The $600 starter bundle bundle comes with Breath of the Wild, the expansion pass, the strategy guide, Just Dance 2017, Snipper Clips, Cut It Out, (laughs) Together, uh, and a 64 gig SanDisk micro SD card, a Nyko Power Kit, a Joy-Con charging dock and a hybrid cover and case. Oh god, so, that's awful. That is an awful bundle. Yeah, I, I'm not super that's pleased with it. That's terrible to do to people. And people um, are gonna do it just to get one. Oh, I hate them. Yeah. The the funny part is I actually did a little informal thing. I, I went out just to see if I could find one in my area, and of course they were all sold out. Which made me mad because Matt said that he had like seven at his best buy still by him. But um what was interesting was GameStop was like, yeah, yeah, we're not going to have any until mid-April. Check back or pre-order for that. And then Target next door was like, yeah, we'll have some on Wednesday. Don't know exactly how many or when they're coming in, but we'll have some on Wednesday. So that's a very different story between those two retailers, which, by the way, we're right next to each other. So that's kind of funny. Yeah, but I also think there's, I, I think they operate on a totally different model. Oh, agreed. Uh, wholeheartedly. GameStop, you know, gets things in, you know, large batches, whereas Target just like is going to get three know. of them, and that's it. Right. If because that. I mean, with tar- yeah, with Target, I mean, don't they? I mean, every I'm assuming everything comes from like a central location. It's not just yeah. Nintendo mailing out like you now. There's you know three things for that. Um, so I think that Target just probably has more buying power overall. So. Uh... On a completely different note, the huge success of Deadpool and now Logan uh, is proving that R-rated comic book movies can make money, and so uh, DC is now seriously considering R-rated films in the super superhero genre. Um, which, man, they can't even get their PG-13 ones right. I'm not real yeah. sure that I'm confident <laughs> about that. That's exactly what I thought when I saw that news story. It's just like, just make a good movie. Um, yeah, they... People just don't understand. I just, I, I I just had... Keep going to them, they keep making money. Yeah, yeah. I, just I, had, sure I just that... had to break up the Nintendo news because I have, like, a grip of it. The NES Classic is now playable using the Nintendo Switch controllers. So That's hilarious. Aware of that. There's yeah, but a third... yeah. But you can't get a Nintendo Classic, so NES Classic still. So I, I have one. <laughs> I just need yeah, they, the, they... the Joy Cons now. <laughs> the funny part is they they talk about um, there's a, a wireless receiver for the um, for the uh, uh, the Switch's Joy Cons and Pro Controller, 
and you can use either or with it. So that's kind of interesting. Um, Parappa the Rapper Remastered releases on March 28th, so just FYI. Uh, oh god, no. Are you looking Stop. forward to the next video time? playing automatically when I load a page? That's not a good thing. Uh, Matt, why don't you tell us about what's in the PS4 4.5 update that's out tomorrow? PS4 that I won't be able to, that I won't be able to download because I'm banned from the PSN. Well, you might be back by then. Yeah, uh, who knows? Know. But yes, the one OS update for the PlayStation 4 version 4.5 that was uh, in beta for the last, I don't know, month and a half or so is released to the masses tomorrow. Uh, that is <clears throat> nine March for those of you who are not watching live. Uh, so key features are improved 2D images on PSVR. Um, so there was something with the res resolution of the uh, the main screen uh, in VR uh, that's been resolved. Uh, voice chat for remote play. So if you're doing remote play, you will now. Oh, also thank be God! I have been chat. utilizing the void the remote play like insanely the last month and a half and. The crazy part is if you're in a voice chat party, you can hear everybody just fine. And even though you're using a Sony DualShock controller, if your microphone is plugged in, you cannot talk to anyone. So <laughs> thank God that they are fixing that. You made my day. Uh, this, so is, this, this thing is great. I want it now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and you, there's a there's a microphone icon on the toolbar for remote play that will uh, allow you to enable and disable the mic. Um, they're uh, they're releasing new versions of the PlayStation app and PlayStation Messages and PlayStation Community app uh, that will help work stuff out uh they're really kind of vague on exactly what that is but also if someone's on their phone app uh, and they appear online in your status they'll actually have a little phone icon next to their name showing that okay yeah you're signed into the psn but you're not actually at a console you're not on a vita you're not on a ps3 you're not on a ps4 you're actually accessing it from your phone or from mobile device so um that'll be handy if you're looking you know, saying, hey, why doesn't this person join my game? Oh, they're on their phone. Okay. Uh, boost mode for the PlayStation 4 Pro uh, was not formally announced as a part of the features of the beta, but quickly became uh, a known item once people started getting the beta version of the, uh, of the OS uh, update. And this will help you get either uh, better frame rates or... Uh, uh, higher resolutions or shorter load times or or whatever for games that do not have a specific uh ps4 pro patch uh the the thing is it won't work with all games some games it will make work worse so there will be games that you are going to play that you'll want to turn it off for so uh, that is a system setting and you'll be able to turn it on and off but uh, it sounds like there are a lot of games uh Officially, Bloodborne doesn't get any benefit from it, but pretty much everyone that's beta tested it with Bloodborne says, oh, yes, it gets a heck of a, a boost on load time and, and the, the, the crispness of the picture. So, um, But it is not guaranteed to work with all titles, so just be aware you may need to turn it on and off. Um, and that, that is the official list of the features now in the, in the blog post. Now, noticeably missing here, was the much critiqued consolidation of the notifications in the menuing system. So I don't know if that's going to actually be in the full release tomorrow or not. It's not in the release notes on the blog. Um, so I don't know if they took, um, and obviously the, the hard drive uh, support, custom wallpapers, and all that stuff are already here and they're not in this list either. So uh, potentially that that feature is still included. But uh, I know there are a lot of people that are not keen on that notification consolidation. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to like it myself, but I have to see it first to be able to really know. Uh, but then obviously the external hard drive support is a huge thing for a lot of people. Um, hasn't affected me personally, but I, I get it. Uh, custom, I, I've got to have it. I'm, I'm out of space again. 
<laughs> I, you know, I clean out games that I haven't played and I realize, you know what, I'm not going to play on a fairly regular basis. So it hasn't hit me yet, but I'm, there'll be a day where it does. Um, the, the custom wallpapers is actually a pretty, uh, f I don't know why I'm excited about it, but I, uh, it just always kills me like when you're booting up final fantasy 15 and you've got that that full screen image of the four guys in the car out on the road why can't i get that as a why don't games when you beat them i mean final fantasy 13 did this when you made certain i, I, I know i wish they, got, they still did that yeah i i wish that was a thing because there's so much great art in games that you get like a view of but then that it's completely inaccessible which kills me um so yeah, uh, that will be available tomorrow. Not exactly what sure what time it's going live, but uh, get it online tomorrow and download it and uh, let us know what you think. Unless you're banned. Unless you're banned. Uh, the Division's Year 2 content is free. So Ubisoft announced a whole range of new stuff for people playing The Division from gifts and credits. Uh, basically, I'm actually a little concerned. Because their blog post does not really detail anything. Which, uh, you know, their first season's worth of content were paid expansions that expanded the game. Didn't do anything to push the storyline forward. Which there's been a lot of criticism for that. Uh, but the game modes were fun. And so now we're not getting a Division 2, it seems. It seems like we're getting vagary for another year's worth of content that's all going to be free so i'm hoping that there's some stuff in there but uh nothing really to report other than they said it's going to be free whatever it is so just as an fyi uh jason momoa has been cast as rico rodriguez in the just cause movie which i will go see day one because that game if you've not played just cause three it's you owe it your what's that it is an action movie. Yeah, it's and it's it's the best kind of self-aware, over the top, ridiculously dumb action movie. That's why I'm I'm down to see this action movie day one. So I think that will be uh, amazing. Um, for for that, uh, I'd be interested to see that. That just seems so. I don't know. I, I that that one does not do anything for me, but I, I hope I hope there's someone out there that likes it. Um, uh, Just Cause Three, just so you know, Matt, is the Super Mario Three Cape Flight of this generation. Oh, yeah, I, I we we played it. I mean, we did the, we did a share yeah. play session of it when you first got it. So yeah. I mean, I I saw it. I I, I know what it does. I I, I get it. I. It, it's but the thing it is so over the top and so self aware and so ridiculous. I don't know how you translate that to a movie. <laughs> that that's my problem. I I don't know how you translate this game to a movie. All right, Atticus, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you later. Uh, Naughty Dog co-president is departing after 15 years. Christoph Bellestra uh, is leaving the Uncharted and Last of Us studio after 15 years with the company. He posted a goodbye letter to Naughty Dog's website. It uh, says he's leaving his role to spend time with his family and pursue personal projects. Uh, wish him the best. Kind of sad to see two big gaming names leave back-to-back -back, um, between um, um, the gentleman from EA, Peter, Peter Moore, leaving to go to f the football scene. Um, and now, and by football, I mean soccer. Um... And now him. Uh, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon will come to the Nintendo Switch in time. Nintendo is talking to companies about supporting the Switch. I'm not sure why you wouldn't do that before you launch the... But okay, sure. Because um, you needed to make Q4 of your fiscal year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, Sony PlayStation is hosting a summer camp for young girls interested in game de development. Uh, Girls Make Games will run the three-week event. Uh, I thought that was a good story for International Women's Day. Um, it'll be a d game development summer camp, and it's been going uh, for four years now, but they got a new sponsor, Sony PlayStation, and a supersized three-week camp in California. 
Um, so that'll be July 10th through 28th. Uh, middle and high school aged girls will learn how to design, program, and publish their own video games. And by the end of the camp, they'll have created fully functional games with the, ho- with the help of local game studios and other industry pros at Sony. Hashtag building the list. I'm, I'm actually kind of interested to see if anything comes out of that. That's you know, cool. I, I, I think my daughter would be insanely interested in that. I'll have to keep tabs on that for Gee, next year. Not if year. only like, you knew someone who lived in Silicon Valley. I know. Who could house her for that time. I know. I, I don't know where that could possibly. You no. Know. No. Uh, mm. Harry Potter's Jason Isaacs is taking the captain's chair in Star Trek Discovery. Lucius Malfoy is going to be and, and the end of the Enterprise. And the weird thing about this is the captain isn't the main character in this case. Correct. Right? I mean, the Correct. Cap- he is not. the central character of Star Trek shows. It, it's basically the number one is the main character of this show. Uh, and, and the interesting thing is he posted this to Twitter saying, my new chair looks comfy with a picture of his captain's chair. And then quickly deleted the tweet 11 minutes after he posted it. But of course, it's the internet, so everybody saved it. And so <laughs> then finally, CBS confirmed that, yes, he will be playing that role. Um, I still just don't... I mean, it's direct to paid subscription the service. CBS I, video service, that's nice, Yeah, I'm, so. I'm, I'm just... Uh, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how I'm going to watch it because those things are US only. Right, right. Well, well, we all know how you're going to watch it. The only way that you can, if you ever yeah. choose to. <laughs> yeah. um, significant nerfs are in sight for Overwatch Anna, and uh, the new Arisa character uh, is being announced to be coming at the end of the month. She's already on PTR. Yeah, but they're saying... She won't actually be launched yeah. until the end of the month. Yeah, um, Mitchell saw that and fired up, fired up a, uh, the game right away, thinking she was going to be live. Oh yeah, it yeah, wasn't no. really clear, and he was so bummed when she wasn't. Um, Naughty Dog is saying that another Uncharted after the Lost Legacy is very unlikely. So I think this may be the the end of it until they make five hundred billion dollars, and then of course we'll get another one. Maybe not made by Naughty Dog, <laughs> maybe. but we'll get another one. And then maybe someday the movie will get made, too. Yeah, that too. Uh, Middle Earth Shadow of, of War. My God, that thing looks amazing. I, I played yeah, it. It's, it's kinda, still alpha. It looks kind of neat. Um, they've expanded the uh, system that Giant Bomb quote, was quoted as saying will be the future of every game made in the next five years will have the Nemesis system built into it. Of course, the, that is and not nobody... true. Yeah, well, only this one. But they have really stepped up the Nemesis system in that now you have uh, friends included in the Nemesis system. Not friends as in multiplayer, but friends as in as you proceed throughout the story, you will create allies who get just as interesting a backstory as your Nemesis and then can actually affect your ongoing story. One of the other pieces of news that why I wanted to bring this up is because they are saying that they are considering allowing you to import your Shadow of Mordor storyline save so that you can continue the journey with your original nemesis from the first game, your arch nemesis, which would kind of be pretty cool, if you ask me. Uh, Mr. J Nice appears. Yeah. No. That was somebody coming in my door and the dog going nuts. Uh, Mr. J Nice says, hey, hey. Howdy, howdy. Sup, sup. Um, my last piece of news that I gathered MMO Wildstar is offering players a free level 50 character update. Upgrade. And so. This was actually going to be a discussion point. We don't have that much time, but I wanted to quickly talk about it. MMOs, the whole point is that you're playing the game. So if And and, and this conversation came up with World of Warcraft did it as well. You're supposed to play the game. That's the enjoyment you get out of that game is, is, you know, seeing the story 
and going from level 1 to level 50 or whatever the case may be, doesn't it defeat the entire purpose of the game if you give somebody a free cut- character upgrade to max level? They're cutting out the wrong part. They need to cut out <laughs> playing with other people. <laughs> you know, the funny part is... Oh, go ahead, Matt. Some people really, it is just about the loot grind. I mean, some people just burn through the story as quickly as humanly possible to get to the end story, do the raids, do the loot grind, and that's the part of the game they enjoy. These are sick and twisted individuals, but they do exist. Like, I want to play through the story of Final Fantasy XIV. I do not want to have to pay 20 bucks a month to rely on some idiot who, <laughs> you know, whatever is existing in the world. But at the same time, Kate, I would challenge that assumption because now, especially with the advent of Discord, and Matt can kind of talk to this, there are communities forming to do exactly that so that you don't waste your money in that way. Like, for example, if you're looking to play Rock Band Rivals That's not online with somebody... There's an entire Discord community of people just looking to play Rock Band Rivals anytime you want to play the Rivals mode online. So I don't think... I, I, I definitely get where you're coming from. I mean, that's Dave's entire existence. He doesn't well, want to see That's anybody. my existence when I played <laughs> Final Fantasy XI. I yeah. wanted to see the story, but I had to spend all this time waiting on parties and... If you didn't get the right makeup of the party, you had to abandon and then wait all over. It was just like, why am I paying all this money? I just want to play this game. So I would I would contend if you went into Final Fantasy XIV now, before you even grabbed the game, went into the Discord servers for matchmaking for Final Fantasy XIV and say, look, I'm looking to establish a, a party that plays on these dates, you know, these days of the week, at these times, so that I can experience the story... I bet you could actually find a consistent party to do exactly that. I I get what you're saying, but I think that technology is changing that. It's Whether or not you're open to it is another thing completely, but I mean, I think to talk. Uh um See, there's already a sort of the six ages with durability up. That's one of the freebies. So have you gotten the the the, the um, dress for Link? You can dress him as a woman. Uh, no, I haven't seen that yet. You must dress him as a woman. I'm, I'm sure it happens <laughs> at some point in the game because I know there's a lot of like disguises you got to put on. And him and Cloud have to meet up in some alternate universe and go out and be fabulous <laughs> together. Oh my god, no! I would uh, read the hell out of that fanfic. Ju- Justin mentions have- that in Shadows of War there are over a thousand unique characters and voice lines. That means no one will ever see all of the voices and characters directly. That's a quote from the directors themselves. Challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, somebody just accepted that. Yeah, I, yeah. I want you to know that I, I watched that 16-minute video with my wife, and she looked at me and she's like, why would you ever want to play this game? You can't play with anyone else. And I'm like, you actually just unexplained Dave and Kate because they never want to play with anyone. I mean, that's their entire existence. And she's like, yeah, but you're not doing anything with anyone else. And then you're going to want me to sit there and watch you play it. And I'm like, oh, now we're getting the real reason you don't want me to buy the game. Yeah, so, yeah, it, it was kind of an interesting like, No, you can go to bed. <laughs> no, what it is... Well go, well, go ahead. I don't like people watching me play games. Like, if someone's in the same room as me watching me play a game, I get very, like... Kind of, you know, that feeling of paranoia you get when it's like someone's looking over your shoulder. Yeah, I don't want to be judged for my poor life choices in video games. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> see, see, and I, I guess I already have to deal with it in real life. I guess that's that's. I mean, my background when I really got heavy into gaming was in college, and <clears throat> the way that worked is it was a social experience for me. Like uh, a friend and I would go into Kansas City. We'd go to the electronics boutique, we'd find a game that we wanted to play, and then we would come back and we would trade off on deaths. 
So whatever the game was, if you failed or died or whatever, we just passed the controller. And so both of us were doing the story at the same time. That to me is how I prefer to play games. I get you're what you're sick saying. You're sick and twisted being. I don't, why? Why? <laughs> okay, whatever. Well, it's like I was I was thinking about this exact thing today because I was like, I gotta get back into streaming for the channel because it's like I have a problem with streaming where it's it's almost like performing in a way when you stream because you kind mm -hmm. of have to be on to be interesting, mm -hmm. and it's just like I don't know how to be on because I'm always off. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually, it's funny the kids bring it up because I thought about that the other day too, about, you know, like what would happen if like I was able to like stream, you know, my Zelda gameplay. Like I would, I'd be silent. Yeah, I'd be like, that's well, it wouldn't, it like, would, okay. So in I that specific it. example, it wouldn't matter because you'd be silent anyways because Nintendo would copyright claim the Twitch feed, yeah. and then it, they would automatically mute the whole thing anyways. Right. So you're cool. right. You would be silent. Take that, take that out of the equation. The thing is, I don't make noise when I'm playing games. I'm quiet, you know, because what I'm doing, I'm enjoying the game. <laughs> like, I, I don't understand how that's, like, how people have fun doing that. I don't think they have fun. And I think that's why we read that article the other week where so many streamers are depressed and everything because they're not actually... Well, playing and enjoying the game they're they're worrying about what they're saying job. about well yeah. so yeah so so to put to your point kate i feel that exact same thing because i am not markiplier i'm not a <laughs> goofy guy you know i'm not that but i try you're not to... anti-semitic like pewdiepie well no i'm not that either <laughs> i'm not that either but but at the same time I try to figure out what it is I bring to people, and I think that that's my business background and my my analysis of stuff. And you know, I I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes it's me talking to the video game half the time, but other times it's just saying, "Oh, well, this is interesting how they did this, or this is why they made that choice." So I'm not that kind of wired on a lot of the times either. But I try and figure out how I can add to that conversation of the game, not just play the game. I also have the issue where, um, I, like, I, I think I'm not saying anything interesting, so mm -hmm. I don't say anything at all. <laughs> yeah, you just have to ramble. Uh, that, that's well, that's something I, I had to overcome. To, is just... And I also have to watch my language, and it's like, that's <laughs> an issue for me. Well, we just need to have an adult channel for, for you. Yeah, and that, that's, that's the other bad thing, because when I am talking, that's it's where I find, that. That's where I find I could probably be the most interesting, is as, like, a crass YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> but so actually, actually, what you're saying I, is you it, want to become Jim Sterling. I got it. <laughs> it, it it depends it depends too on the game like when i was streaming no man's sky i could talk to people that were making comments and it, it didn't bother me at all but i was playing not a hero every time i opened my mouth to respond to somebody i died it was pissing me off yeah that's that game you can't yeah that's there's not time for parallel that. processing there <laughs> I was just thinking back. I, I almost wish I was streaming uh, when I was playing um, way back in Uncharted Two, because um, <laughs> I remember playing that game and having more than one moment where I said something, and then the game would say and then the game said it right afterward. Like it was, it was hilarious how they did that. They put a lot of care into that. And I just remember, like you know, where I was playing, like you know, wait, there was like wave after wave of bad guy coming. I was like. I mean, how many freaking guys are there? And then, and then Nathan would sit there and go like, "How many guys are there?" You know? Like immediately, it's like they they had it. That game was tuned. Justin said, "It me streaming it would be like the front like the front camera shame on phones." Oh God, is that me? Is that my sound? Also, yeah, that that's a thing. That, that's the other yeah. thing I hate the way I sound. Yeah, and also so Mark Matt did a great job yeah. on Friday, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's, you know, something that I, so I, I will tell you that like in college for me, I was always the guy building the sets and directing the, the stage. I never was the person on stage. So even for me, I mean, I've done radio for most of my life and I don't mind being on camera, but I think it's something you learn and get better at every single day that you do it. It's just practice like anything else. So. Uh, and I'm still not great at it. I still have problems with words. 
I done word good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know so the best words. I know the best words, all the biggest and best words. Uh, I make yeah. words bad. Bigly, bigly. Uh, so that's gonna. Uh, I, do, I do have a couple of key, key items I have to hit quick. Yes, go ahead. Oh, oh, oh. Rumor. Go, go, go. Rumor story. Possibly not true, but rumor. <laughs> PS5 in 2018. 10 teraflops. <laughs> <laughs> I have all the teraflops. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so I don't, like, like I said, maybe not true, but I wouldn't be surprised. I just love how, true. like, We've read it, like, remember when, like, it was, like, 16-bit versus 8-bit? They were like, oh, that's not true 16-bit. That's two 8-bit processors hooked together. That doesn't count. That's not the way it works. We're there with teraflops. <laughs> not a damn person buying these things that, like, cares about, like, oh, 10? 10 teraflops? That's... No, see, people care for the wrong reason. Because they hear, you know, six teraflops in Scorpio. That's so powerful. I'm gonna be uber elite. Look at the size of my dick. And then it's they get ten terrible. Easy, 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 easy. Better. It's easy, like... easy, Kate. God, I gotta have some kind of button for you. I see it. Just... Kate button. God. Uh, it's just, it's just worse they, hear than, ten, they don't even know what a teraflop is, but they're like, ten's better than six. I gotta get that. Uh, Je Jeff the says quality. some, some the people play games like system. they read books. They just want to enjoy the experience. And, and I get that way, too. There's a lot of times where I get sucked in while I'm uh, broadcasting a game where I forget to talk because I just, like, get in that zone and I'm doing it, and then I'd be like, oh, crap, I got to say something, you know? And, and then it's forced, and I feel bad. But I think that I actually prefer gaming with somebody else here because then it becomes a conversation, and that's... Yeah. That's a, yeah, yeah. I think that's the only way I would be able to work is if I'm, and, and I know you've tried to get me to do this a couple of times, and I, and I, I should was do just going to say, huh? Yeah, it's like no huh. That sounds this, interesting, is, Dave. Mm, is, yeah. is if I jump in, I'm like watching somebody else, and I can just like make fun of you playing. Yeah, like, I have no problem with that. None <laughs> at all. In fact, I, I, mean, I kind of want to do that. This yeah, is how like, Friday nights work. You have to join us for a Friday night sometime. Yeah, this, it, I, this is exactly how Friday nights work. Friday nights I mean, were built for you, Dave. Yes. Seriously, it's... Dave, the last time Turo was on, I think I almost peed my pants. We were laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah, it, it was... My, my wife was in tears, and uh, Turo was on the ground rolling around, and I was laughing in my chair to the point that I could not articulate words. And it's not like that for three hours, but it's definitely in there a few times. Uh, and we have a lot of fun on Friday night. So you should you should definitely come join us. Kate's even been there, and she's had fun. I, I'm not it's knocking true. it. It's just, you know, sometimes Fridays are tough, you know? Because you drink? Get a kitchen pass. Get a kitchen pass for one Friday. I mean, exactly. come on. Exactly. That's all you need is one. Even I can do it. Pushers. Jeff's gonna no, no, do no, it. No, it's not that. Eventually, it's, it's put a us lot. all to shame and drawful. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was there actually. Not this last week and this last Friday, but the Friday before. Oh my gosh! Gonna, somebody yeah, was drawing. Somebody was let, drawing really well. I thought like it was that. Jeff. You don't let people like that play that game. No, oh just, yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. just gonna make you feel bad. Yeah, but it was amazing. So let's talk a little bit about our uh, housekeeping items, as always. Well, uh, okay. sure... I, got, I got two things oh, okay. I have to hit. you two things. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. First, um, if you're on the PlayStation platform, PlayStation 4 specifically, uh, remember to go to the blog and vote for your game that you want to have a discount on. It's either Hitman at 50% off or Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 at 33% off. And also today dropped. And it's just weird. Yeah. They're different rates. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's because they're different price points. Oh, okay. Uh, also, today dropped. the downloaded when I popped on my PlayStation to check something earlier today. No Man's Sky's Pathfinder update uh, dropped today. It brings ground vehicles. Uh, PlayStation... Play, PlayStation... English. <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation Why are you being Pro, racist, Matt? Come on. 
Way to go, PewDiePie. Yeah, geez. PlayStation 4 Pro support. There we go. Uh, upgraded visuals. You can own multiple ships now. You can uh, share your base online with other users. Don't know exactly how that works yet. Um, there's a permadeath mode to go along with the survival mode. Uh, you can build racetracks for your ground vehicles. Uh, the ships now have specializations in classes like they were originally supposed to have. So you have... So what you're saying is now the game is kind of what they promised at launch. Uh, it's getting much closer, yes. Um, doubling the base <laughs> building uh, variety. Multi-tools will also get specializations now. There's new weapon modes. Photo mode, so Dave's getting the game. Whoa, what? Um, and 50% uh, more original music from 65 Days of Static. <laughs> So, um, yeah, Pathfinder update. It is live. I, my, my system downloaded it uh, as soon as I turned it on this afternoon. And then one last thing I just saw. So, sorry, three things. Uh, but I think, Mark, this will be important to you. Farpoint launches for the PlayStation VR on May 16th. Uh, so the game and the Gun Con both launch on the same day. Fantastic. For your PlayStation VR. So, as always, $80 US. Uh, if you want to learn more about us, see some of our back episodes or all the other shenanigans we get it, we get up to, you can do so at GamersLive.com. That's our website. Our YouTube channel uh, is... Your, oh, you, you came in late, Justin. We already covered the 4.5 update for like 20 minutes earlier. Um, <laughs> yeah, our YouTube channel is YouTube.com slash C slash GamersLive.com, all spelled out. You can also check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash gamersledge. Uh, you can hit up our Facebook, and remember, if you want to win the Gwent code, all you have to do is head to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash gamersledge. You'll see a thread already started. Uh, like the page, and then tell us your funniest gaming moment, and you'll be entered to win. We'll pick a winner at random, and we will announce the winner next week on the podcast right here. Uh, and that's going to bring us to final thoughts. Dave, final thoughts. Uh, final thoughts. Um, can I, I just want to play Zelda tonight, but you know, I, I knew I had to talk to you guys. I was I was going to call in sick, <laughs> but I knew how disappointed you would be. I love we dock you your pay. Like, I love how you say it, like I had to come talk to you guys. You've been wanting <laughs> to talk about the Switch since you got it and Zelda, so. I think you should at least own up to the fact that you are indeed excited about these things and the fact that you're actually playing games again for the first time in like a decade. Yeah, it's not a decade, um, but yeah, it's been a while. I mean, the games kept me up till like three o'clock in the morning I'm proud more of than once this week. That's, that's a, that, that hasn't happened for a while. And that's, you know, that's that special sauce we were talking about that for some reason that game you know, has that, so, yeah. Uh, if you have the means and you love Zelda, definitely pick it up, whether it's for the Wii U or the Switch. Um, if you have the Switch, you know, enjoy it. But get the game. It's worth it. It's awesome. It's probably, it's probably my second favorite Zelda game of all time. So. Uh, Your first being? Uh, the first being the um, the Super Nintendo one. Um, link to the past. Link to the past, yeah. Kate, final thoughts? Third one being Link's Awakening on the Game Boy Color. <laughs> you know, I knew that was in there somewhere. Really love that one. My final Kate, thought? Fi yep. Uh, on this International Women's Day, I have a little joke for you. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, first is of all, is it family friendly? about his fair play? It's, it is... It is clean. Okay. How many friend zone guys does it take to just to put in a light bulb? Six. The answer is none. They just compliment it and then get mad when it doesn't screw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I approve of this message. Um, Matt, final thoughts. Uh, I was looking for the post back because my phone refreshed, but I can't find it. Um, UFS, the Universal Fighting System, has finally announced their long-awaited return of Street Fighter to the UFS system. 
Um, Mark and I, Mark introduced me to UFS uh, way back, gosh, when, long time ago. Uh, my first demo ago. deck was a Blanca deck, and I won. I beat him. He was kind of confused upset. when that happened. <laughs> 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 and uh, so, yeah, um, I've been off and on with UFS for, for a number of years now because, well, nobody plays here except for people in my family. Um, it's not carried in any of the stores or supported locally at all. And I don't have time to build a community. So um, I, I definitely think I'll probably be looking to, to pick up a box of this though, because the cards are looking awesome. The art is awesome. Um, and, it, and it looks like they've got some new keyword mechanics that look really interesting. Um, right now they're unlocking the character list by likes on their Facebook page. So Jasco Games, if you go uh, UFS and Jasco Games, if you go look that up, uh, almost all the characters are unlocked at this point. There's, I think, only four left that have been, haven't been unlocked. Uh, but if you go, you know, give it the page a like, and we'll we'll get the rest of the characters unlocked. For I will do whatever it takes to make a competition ready Dan deck. That's all I'm saying. Dan is unlocked yet. I you know I don't know if the old Dan is still supportable or not no but, he's not so um, i'm hoping that they have him in the new set he, he could be one of the four the the two outer edge characters are still locked so those yeah. are usually wonky ones so yep because it's set up just like a character select from the video game so nice so my final thought is actually along the same lines as matt uh, and he's gonna be very upset with me once i show this <laughs> so if you weren't aware the Dresden Files cooperative card game just came out, wow. and it is not a it is not a competitive card game. It is a cooperative card game. Cooperative. And inside this set, you get five decks, so that means Matt's entire family could play. Uh, and it's it's supposed to be one of the best new card systems ever made. Uh, it's getting rave reviews across wow. the board. I really like the Dresden Files. Um, so, which, if you're not familiar with it at all, think World of Darkness with a little bit of P.I. Noir added in, and that's pretty much what Dresden Files is, with Dresden being a mage, so that's kind of interesting. Um, but the, the, the base set covers all five books in the series, and then it gives you um, Side Jobs, which is a random scenario generator based on the short story collection, uh, and then... There are expansion packs with more characters. Uh, each expansion pack has two new character decks and then um, an additional storyline for you to complete. So uh, the nice part was, you'll notice attached to the top, uh, this actually was a Kickstarter thing initially and now these are the retailers, but because I found an awesome kick-ass game store, they actually included the Kickstarter um, promo cards that you were you got nice. when you pledged with the actual game so it's pretty sweet uh how so much that, is the course that i want to say it was 39.99 that's not bad wow it's not bad and you get five decks out of that so that's yeah that's pretty I mean, good much so, 40 uh, exactly exactly um so i'm i'm looking forward to playing this uh making my poor wife learn the rules with me she's thrilled about it i'm, I'm <laughs> I'm watching her face right now. She's absolutely thrilled about it. And uh, we'll close the show, as we always do, with uh, a wonderful wisdom of uh, information. We already had a joke. We're done. No, 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 no. How did the hipster burn his mouth? He did it before it was cool. Yeah, but you didn't say what he did, so. He drank, drank the, the coffee, coffee before it was cool. cool. Okay, fine. You can't have that one then. Um, <laughs> it was better. What, it was. <laughs> what did Batman say to Robin before they got in the car? I shouldn't say anything. Family podcast, family podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What did Batman say to Robin before they got in the Batmobile? Here's a towel. Get, get in the car. <laughs> get in the car. <laughs> get in the car. <laughs> Uh, the that's right. Until that's next week. What I was gonna say. Uh, before we go, since it's actually gonna work this time, as always, if you would like to support the site, you can do so by heading over to gamersledge.com and clicking the store button, where you can see all the awesome gaming uh, and uh, pop culture related jewelry for both guys and girls. Or 
You can head over to patreon.com slash gamersledge where for just as little as a dollar a month you can get your name on every show that we do. And we take this opportunity to thank those folks who pledge the $5 and above level by name. So thank you, Justin, Naomi, Bobby, Regina, Ian, and John. So thank you all. And uh, if you want to get your name on every show you do, uh, head to patreon.com slash gamersledge just like these folks did. Until next week, for Dave, for Kate, for Matt, and myself, thanks for watching in Game On. Game On. Game on. My joke is better. <laughs> Sit on the edge of the couch and my butt hurts. <laughs> oh. <laughs>